sorry. I'm Rob Israel. I'm Joseph K. And you still going on about that? All right, Joseph. What's going on? Uh, a whole lot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so a lot more because we didn't record last week. That's right. Yeah. We, we, you know, looking back, we usually take like a week or uh, two weeks off uh around this time uh each year and uh you you had traveled on a miniature vacation i don't know what you're talking about, I was about the entire time. <laughs> you just didn't call me and i wasn't gonna respond I was gonna, yeah, I was... you didn't you didn't call you didn't you didn't call you didn't you didn't leave a message that's I true I, I i have to i have to not look needy I was I was in a I was knee deep in a binge rewatch of the Waltons, uh, which <laughs> understood. Anyone in our audience would t- totally understand. Yes, you you know, uh, I, no, we are not going to do an episode of Waltons. <laughs> um, I, that guy, we're going to do a whole episode on that one guy's mole. Honestly, yeah, Richard. Uh, Richard Thomas, what was the his guy name? from uh, it? He was in the It miniseries. Yep, he was in It, and he was in also in that great uh, Richard Corman, Battle Beyond the Stars. Battle. Oh yeah, yep, yep. That yeah. Roger Corman. Yeah, it was one of the uh, quick cash grabs after Star Wars came out. But yeah. It was like, weird. It was like kind of a little semi softcore porn, sort of. Like yeah. I, I must have more than that. Star Wars was yeah, certainly, and it had uh, it had Hannibal a little bit more. It had, uh, it had Hannibal in it, George Papard. Yep. Um, um, yeah. So maybe in the future we'll do an episode on that man's mole. On this, <laughs> I don't know what we can, how much we could extrapolate from that. Two hours. It is a big juicy mole. It's a it's a big mole. Yeah. It's a big berry, but I don't know if we can get. Uh, I mean, how much content? It depends. I mean. <laughs> I mean, you can, I guess you're literally getting, was it uh, trying to get as much lemonade out? Squeeze, <laughs> squeeze that mole. You maybe them. have a dermatologist come on. And- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that might be, not be a bad idea. That would definitely make the episode more uh, introspective. And- yeah. Right. Get a melanoma and, expert. And just- since we live in a, in a time where we have to have both sides. Yeah. Somebody who's not a uh, dermatologist or. Right the opposite of whatever uh a like a guy a uh, what a phrenologist <laughs> someone who sits out in the sun with no uh sunblock or anything someone who skips the sunblock and instead uses butter who rubs <laughs> butter yeah kramer <laughs> kramer on from <laughs> sticks of butter like an antiperspirant roll on yeah. all over their face i don't know if we're gonna invite that person <laughs> over because we might be tempted to eat them yeah. <laughs> they'll be so burnt and crispy and delicious yes um what is that i smell <laughs> <laughs> Do, do you remember that Seinfeld episode? Yeah, that was a good one. And Newman sees Kramer as the turkey. Like, yeah, turkey. It's like straight out of a Looney Tunes cartoon. Yeah, that was like, a good one. It's so dumb. It works. Yeah. <laughs> well, well we, it, it it is October twentieth. Yeah. Or October twenty first soon. Uh, yep. So we're gonna talk about. Uh, go ahead. What are we gonna talk about? Well, we're gonna talk about uh, you, you, some brief things in the beginning. Some house clean housekeeping things. You um. Want to talk about some Squid Game theories? Yeah, <laughs> which have been making the rounds. So those are yeah. always fun. Uh, you have a note about what if, uh, which yep, I thought was pretty interesting. Yep. And Wait. then we're going to talk about uh, the South Lake School Board in Texas. Yep. Yep. South Lake, Texas. Uh, it's actually the Carroll. I think it's the Carroll Independent School Board, but it's it's <laughs> South Lake. Yep. Uh, and then we're going to talk about Joe Manchin and Kristen Cinema. Always a bad time. Yep. And then um, for a little bit, it did, we're talking about like Matt Gates uh, and Jim Jordan's appearance before the January 6th committee today, which clown was kind show. of, yeah, well, it was a clown show. Uh, and then we'll talk about Colin Powell, Condoleezza Rice, and um, the Dean of Prager University. <laughs> <laughs> Always a good time. Yep. And then we'll f- finish up with the uh, Netflix, Dave Chappelle, Margaret Atwood, uh, d- d- turfing of streaming services it's it's kind of a, a <laughs> turf a, service yeah turf uh, streaming service. <laughs> it's it's a weird it's a, a it's weird in some ways it's just a perplex, 
perplexing uh, phenomenon. Um, but we'll talk about that, and that that'll that'll take us through the the end. Um, all right. All right. So, what what is your Squid Game theory? You have two. Well, couple... I personally didn't come up with any. I can make up some. Well, let's couple, hear the couple of things real quick. So, we did yeah. talk about the show. We we did two ep- in two of our episodes. You could find them and like I don't know, like three weeks ago. Or something yeah, yeah. Like we discussed it a little bit at the end of each episode. Uh, one funny thing I learned is that supposedly we've got it in America. We got a weaker translation of the show. That supposedly, oh. um, if they they didn't, this is what I heard. And yeah, yeah. I could, that they didn't properly translate it or something like that. Okay. There, there's like stuff in the story that we're missing. Um, oh. something. So one of the funny things was a lot of because Squid Game is like incredibly popular. Like it's funny. Netflix just dumps a ton of shit all the time, and I remember seeing this trailer. A week before it came out, I was like, "Holy shit, the show looks insane!" Yeah, I, was like, I wrote. I think mean, I'm gonna forget this because it's, it's like a weird import. Um, right, like, it'll probably be something that no one will ever find because there's a ton of shit on Netflix. That yeah, gets dumped, and if you don't like, sometimes I'll look in the on my app on the phone, and I'll look in uh, coming soon. I'll watch some trailers. That's how I find out about things. I remember I watched some show from Korea also. I don't, anyone watched it it was like some weird show where people were turning to these like deep demonic zombies in this apartment building it was pretty crazy i watched show. that is it was it a guy and a girl was in the apartment next to him and he used a drone to communicate with her yes i saw that i thought that was okay. really good yeah yeah it was good i'm just like is it will there be a season two there was some cheesy music in it like that kind of in some of the scenes but it it was yeah. a pretty damn good show like it was pretty some of the monster designs were pretty nuts yeah it was fine. Okay. I mean, it didn't change my life or anything, but it was, no, it was, it was fun. fine. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I would like to see a season two, but uh, I don't remember the name of it. Do you remember the name of it? No. And I honestly, in my head, I'm remembering it as a movie, not as a mini series. It was a TV series. It was a it TV was a series. series. Yeah, well, it's starting out as a drone, right? And they meet each other. Yeah. And she turns out to be kind of a badass. Uh, He's oh, maybe like this, that was a movie. I think it was a movie. He was like a video gamer. He, he okay, was, yeah, that was a zombie movie. No, this is a different. This is a completely different. That was a yeah. He's like a. He's like a. That was a zombie movie. Where yeah, they're in apartment buildings. That's different. No, this was a TV series okay. that also took place in like a building and like it was like weird. People were like turning left and right into these weird huh. demons and the, the what they were like their sin or whatever would become like kind of like a monster. Oh, it's cool. really odd and like everyone was like kind of cursed i'll see if i could find the name of that one that yeah was i'd show. like to watch that's that. a place in an apartment building no not the same show we're <laughs> not we're not the, that movie that movie was good yeah um i didn't think squid games would be this big thing and it ended up being huge and a lot of companies are like trying to win like, like dominoes on tiktok like everyone was doing their version of the uh honeycomb game yeah yeah watch out and uh, on twitter it was like ge not or uh what's one of the major car companies uh gm uh, gm or whatever that was like which one do you like and it was like the honey thing yeah, yeah. and this guy tweets and says it's kind of funny because like the main character had like ptsd from uh being beaten at a worker's rights like <laughs> a, like a uh, yeah like a, union strike at an auto plant mm-hmm. and someone's like yeah good job car company you really <laughs> missed the fucking point of the show uh there's like some other funny things uh tim pool who's known for uh being a uh a lying piece of shit oh yeah um he said that uh actually uh that that Squid Games is an attack on communism and not capitalism. Sure. And I said I tweeted out and said, how, who's, who can tell, like, no one watched even one minute of the fucking show. Yeah. Or, or it's like, hey, this show is, like, really popular, and it has, like, some actual, like, very, pro- I don't know, progressive, but more definitely left-leaning social yeah. takes on, like, the world and, like, uh, and it's, a, it's incredibly popular and my audience is watching. So I have to like convince my audience that it, like, yeah. I have to lie to them because 
the show goes against everything in my my ideology is so i gotta lie to them and tell them no you see it's actually an attack on communism and it's like where do you even get that what because the woman defects from north korea she said it sucked in south korea too yeah <laughs> that was the joke she was like a pickpocket because she was struggling yeah in south korea it was like it's like sorry tim pool you're wrong like it, it it doesn't go along with your ideology at all no, uh, no. i mean problem is when shows like that get like super popular uh they get misconstrued by people like people ignore the messaging a lot of people also don't really watch it they claim they yeah. do they just Where's... become aware of like the red light green light thing and the yeah. uh, the honeycomb thing with the scratching out became very popular like i said domino's pizza had an ad on tiktok for i it. think a lot of people watch youtube clips of the killing scenes or maybe they kind of like race through it that reminds me of those people that like like paul ryan liking rage against the machine you know? <laughs> or, or i think he didn't like anything i think he just said what's a popular band that yes. i remember from high school focus oh. group <laughs> What's that song? Oh, you mean, the, oh, my favorite band, The Machine That Rages On. Right. right? Uh, yes, that's it, Paul. The Machine That Rages On. Um, yeah. Okay, well, I, so two, go ahead. You know, I was going to say, I could see with your original theory, I could see there being like an oddity in the translation because I... Well, that's not a theory I came up with. It's just, it's a fact that there's some things that just didn't translate. Well, if I watched it with the subtitles on... I watched uh, it with that and, and with on and in English too. Yeah, I, that's how I watched it. And there is some variation even with that. Like they would say things and the translation would be different than what they oh, said. Oh, sometimes they're very, it's really funny. Sometimes yeah. You're like, they didn't say any of that. Right. It's just, <laughs> it's bizarre. So, uh, so this, this makes a lot of sense. All right. Two Squid Game theories. Uh, there's one that's been going around that says the old man, spoilers. Yep. Spoilers. Unless you're Tim Pool. You clearly watched the entire show, got everything about it, was able to extrapolate that this was actually <laughs> to the wonders and prosperity of capitalism. Mm. Uh, the old man is Gi Hoon. That's the main character. He's his father, the yeah, guy I've, who started. We talked about this. Did we talk briefly? about it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. That's my, wrong. my kid yeah. told me that theory. My kid. Yeah, your kid. Who, I, they said they're like, Squid Games is not good for kids. Like, yeah. my son knows about Squid Games because all the TikTok stuff. All he, the TikTok stuff. I don't stuff. think he's watched it. I'm pretty it's sure my daughter has. Vi- it. It's an incredibly violent show. Yeah. And it's it's bleak and it's it's rough. I wouldn't let my kid watch it. Okay. So, yeah, the old man is his. Uh, it might be his father because there's some exchanges earlier about his birthday when yep. he like, takes money out he uses his birthday and that's the same date that like the old man said my son's birthday is that yes date. and he said he lived in the in the same neighborhood growing up or whatever that's what he grew up and it would almost make sense yeah another theory going around that could even make may even validate that read that even more Hmm. Remember when Ali, Ali is the Pakistani guy yep. who, uh, he's literally the only non-Korean guy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, mean, I mean, I think there's like a, like one white dude or something running around. Uh, but Ali, uh, you first meet him in the red light, green light game. He saves gi He yeah. grabs him from falling because if gi fell, that little, that stupid dog would have killed him immediately. Right. Oh, so weak. The rumor is, is that also Ali is not a, was not a regular contestant, that he's a VIP. Uh, you also don't see him get killed. It's just like you don't see, oh, yeah. so when they play the marbles game, I'm pretty sure, I'm going to look, I, now I kind of want to like, yeah, yeah. Oh, watch this scene on Netflix, but supposedly you don't see him get shot in the head. Everyone else you see actually get killed. Right. You don't see, just like the old man who gets killed off screen. You kind of hear Ali's death also getting shot. Okay. Ali was there to save Gi Hoon. That's why he grabs him. He had to make oh. sure that Gi Hoon survived the game, the initial game. Because the fucked up thing about that game was is that half the people were killed immediately because they had no fucking clue what was going right. on. Right. It, it took out like almost almost half of them. It's like literally. they didn't even explain to them like this is a really simple game. Right? Like green light. You don't yeah. move red light, stop, green light, go. 
Yeah. Know? And they didn't explain the consequences. No. And so yeah. people were like murdered. So of course he human would why would he not get killed too? Right. Of course, people making jokes about like how the main cast are the ones that survive. It's like, well, you could say that about any fucking sure. show, unfortunately. You know, that's just how it works. Yeah. I mean, that's don't watch, don't watch things then, because that's literally what happens all the fucking time. Right. Like, yeah, of course. They, it's called plot armor. I mean, like, but suppose the odds that Luke would survive all that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, come on. Right, really? A size of a yeah. womp rat? Like, really? <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that's so that's the reason why Ali saved him because he was yeah. there to keep an eye on him. And there might be some other clues, like something to do with like his fingers were missing. He had mm. missing fingers on his hand. And there's like also like if you notice, like when they in the first episode, they all decide. Remember, they're like, we're ending the game. Right. We're going home. Um, they go home, and uh, the old man finds Gihon at like like. Kihun ends up at this like bodega, or, like a little mm -hmm. market or something, and the old it just happened to be the old man's place, and he's telling him and he's going back, and then the his Kihun's friend, childhood friend, helps Ali out. Uh, he never yeah. Even, he gives him like his phone or he gives him something something yeah, and it's almost like they were being tested, and it's like that's why they made it to the end, like it. Huh. They were like, so that's my theory there, that one. Yeah, I can see that. So we'll find out. I mean, it'll be a season two. If Ali shows up, then all right. If he's dead, then yeah, he was killed. Yeah. Maybe I was wrong. Again, I don't I don't remember the show 100%. I don't. Right. I, I'm not going to go back right now and look. I mean, you could just go on Netflix and check and see in the scene. Sure. I'm almost positive that Ali's death is off camera, which means if it's off camera, he's probably not dead. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, oh, hey, I like those theories. And then my other theory was that now I should make up something stupid. <laughs> oh, someone made a joke and said something about the bridge in the end, like that land, yeah. that one game where they had to walk across the glass. Well, couldn't they just walk on the rails? I, like, yeah. Couldn't they crawl on the rails? And this one guy tweeted and made a really solid point and said that someone would probably do that and they would shoot that person immediately and yeah there would be an announcer saying that's not that that's you're not cheating how, you're cheating yeah. that's not how the game works they yeah. Would, yeah they would kill that person if because and i was like you know what that's a good save yeah. <laughs> but yeah why didn't one person do that you know like fuck it i'm just gonna crawl on the rails yeah that end scene though when they like make it across and they just do that spiteful blow up the glass and it just goes everywhere yeah Kills that it stabs that girl who basically is uh, she gets killed by I forgot the guy's name uh, the Hoon's friend right yeah he kills her uh, like he slits her throat but like she was basically gonna die anyway she had like a uh, stomach like a uh, gut something yeah yeah they said like you can get like you have like a couple hours to live you're gonna bleed out eventually she had one of those and it was all because of that glass exploding I was like watch yeah. it oh my god it's so gross <laughs> I mean it was just nasty uh okay so that's it on that um i, I made some artwork i don't know if you saw the oh yeah uh i did like my they live one it's the uh girlfriend uh the distracted boyfriend meme yes uh and it's not as obvious but it's so you, did you see it it's the i don't you know now that you say that i saw a couple go of this squid game go on my instagram rob is real art it's mm -hmm. like third recent post or fourth recent post it's kind of similar to the They Live post. And oh, it's like the red light, green light, and it's Ki Hoon being saved by Ali, but the yeah. is like the distracted boyfriend meme. And he's like holding on. <laughs> Does it work? Yeah, that works. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, there's a lot that people can look at it and be like, what the fuck is going on here but if you if you watch the show yeah you get it there you, if you go watch the show you're like why are these two men you know what's going on here <laughs> the little girl what's wait what who's that little girl what is what about why is that guy wait what and then i'm like getting arrested yeah this is so troubling <laughs> what? this is so troubling <laughs> <laughs> no no it's a show called squid game oh cool oh, okay everything's great. Oh, shit. everything's good everything's great all right cool 
Uh, so another thing we talked about recently, yes, was in the end of the episode. We're starting with this. We ended with these this content on our last podcast. We figured we'd just get it out of the way. We talked about what if. Uh, I guess we talked about it every week. It was on, right? Yeah. So the last ten minutes of the podcast, or we talked about yep. what if. So it ended. It was awesome. We both liked it. You can it was great. To yeah. episodes. We talked about each one. There was, uh, and I brought it up even in our podcast. I said. I don't understand. There was Gamora, and there's like a little scene, and I feel like I'm like, did we miss something? Right. It What's seemed out of place. Here? Like, so the Watchers gathering up the heroes, like his, uh, what do you call them? Like Guardians of the uh, Guardians of the Multiverse. Universe. Yeah. yeah. The, the the super friends. Yeah. Um, and. Gamora was there, and I was like, "Wait, what's going on here?" It's like it starts with like Tony Stark, and he's like in this modified like Hulkbuster uniform. Yep. It's not like so. Th- basically, that was not a mistake. That was not just some like we're just gonna shove this in and just accept it. There was an episode that never got finished. So we got nine episodes. There was supposed to be ten, which makes sense. It seems to be like kind of numbered a lot of these streaming services they usually have like 10 episodes a yeah. season or um and there was an episode it was basically what if tony if, what if iron man basically went to scar the planet that thor goes to and the hulk is in in uh thor ragnarok right so basically the plot that spoilers to an episode that never came out uh, and this may not be true, uh, but it makes sense if you look at it. Um, so after, in the end of the first Avengers movie, mm-hmm. Tony Stark actually goes into space to bring a the nuclear missile that was being sent to destroy New York. He brings right. it to the hole, and he he sends it to the Chitauri, or whatever the fuck they were called, mm-hmm. and blows them up or whatever. Uh, and then he ends up he goes through back through the portal, and he ends up on Earth again. But the room supposedly. It's what if Iron Man didn't make it back into the portal? Right. He's stuck in space. So somehow, whatever in the storyline, he ends up on the planet of Scar, where Thor ends up in Ragnarok mm-hmm. and uh, where Hulk is with a gladiator. But this predates that. So Thor's not, uh, Hulk is not there. Thor's not there because this, uh, this is after the first Avengers movie. Iron Man uh, basically constructs armor there. And he becomes like the champion. He becomes like the Hulk there. Right. And then Gamora is sent there. Uh, this again predates like Guardians, so she's still kind of like a bad guy working for her dad, Thanos. Sure. Uh, I guess whatever happens in the plot, whatever it is, Gamora and Iron Man team up, whatever, and they stop or kill Thanos. Because remember in the ep- in the episode, uh, yeah, the watcher says Merc killer of Thanos, and they have that machine that like that cute little robot that eats up. Yeah, or something. They right. Like, use the sh- it. Yeah, the infinity and, shredder. And, and it, it, it. So another reason too is that like Jeff Goldblum is in the Party Thor episode, the mm-hmm. Game Master, and some of our good points said like, well, they probably weren't going to get him just for like those two seconds. He's obviously in that episode that never got finished. Jeff Goldblum probably revoiced his character in the full episode where he's more of a featured character, not just like a background. Right, actor. yeah. He shows up in the party door episode, and I think he's in like one other episode. It just was like a quick gag. Yeah. Um, so, of course, that makes sense. Like, so this episode never got made. Uh, it also explains like, why did the watcher say to Tony Stark, no, not you, you stay. Right. Tony's in the beginning of it saying like we can use the Infinity Gauntlet for like a shield. Yeah. He, he's still on that whole like shielding the Earth, and we could we'll use the Infinity Gauntlet for good, right? Right. And what and Gamora's like, no, we got to destroy him. That's the main reason why, like, when the Watcher says, "No, I'm grabbing Gamora because she she's gonna do the right thing." Sorry, Tony. You may you may have good intentions, but you're you're gonna fuck everything up. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so. Uh, that's why he stayed. So I thought that was kind of cool. And again, that's based on a uh, an episode that never came out. Yeah. So um, I guess they said we'll see it. So well, that's kind of cool because I remember watching it and being like, is that like some weird Mandela effect or something where there was an episode and I didn't see it? And in some way, uh, I saw this recently on like a TikTok or something. Some of them up a good point about Mandela effect and said it's just a... Uh, 
they're slightly inherently racist. Because huh. uh, one of the main Mandela effect is white people thinking that there there were that Sinbad was in a Shaq movie. Oh, they're just merging a movie together. <laughs> yeah. And then the other, the fact that the name of it, the whole thing is uh, based off of uh, Nelson Mandela getting killed or something. Yeah, I, I never understood why it was called the Mandela Effect. But yeah, I th- I've heard it's named somehow after Nelson Mandela, which obviously would make Did sense. Did you ever see the X-Files episode that's about the Mandela Effect? It was one of the new new seasons. No, I only saw the first of the two new seasons. Um Okay. The second season was actually was literally airing as we were moving to Texas, See, and I missed like two episodes. It was like okay, kind of a mess. The whole th- the whole thing was kind of a mess. Yeah, we had this one episode that was great. It was about like Mandela effects and us doing aliens and shit. And it's it's definitely a good episode to watch. Cool. And like the aliens start saying like, oh, it's super weird. Start saying like quotes from Trump. Maybe I'll check that out. I, I always meant to go back and watch that because in the first season of the new one, there's a really great episode. It was like a funny one. I forget. Uh, uh, Is it the one with the, the were monster where the monster yes. comes a demon? Yeah. And it stars the guy from, who's the manager from Fly the Concords, Rice Yeah, Darby. it was that hilarious. Was a, it was, that's the best episode. Yeah, yeah. He's a, he's a reverse. He, he becomes like a human. He's like, yeah. It's a reverse werewolf or something. Like, the whole episode was just great. I mean, it was really, really well done. Yeah, he's like a monster, and he like comes. He's like whatever. I don't know. He sleeps for a hundred years. He comes out, yeah. and then he like finds himself working at a job. And like, yeah, he's like not really a person. I yeah, that's a good one. The problem with that show was it start the seasons would start with these big episodes like that, and it would you would think there would be this like overall narrative that would flow through it. And yeah. then it was kind of choppy as fuck, and they would have these like one-off episodes, kind of like the original show. Yep. And yep. It, it just didn't connect. Like I feel like people have people have different expectations of TV shows these days. Like yeah. they, not everyone they want that long form narrative. They want that like serialized stories and not like episode of the week monster of the week yeah i always look at and i know he's kind of problematic these days but like i always thought that the the best example of that being done well were the buffy there was the buffy tv show where there was a clear narrative arc yeah the but, big bad they were yep, called it. right and there'd be a little bad before the big bad and we would have like a demon of the week that, or yep. monster of the week and there'd always be like a few Monster of the Week episodes, but even in those Monster of the Week episodes, there'd be something that would connect it to the larger arc. I mean, they, they just really nailed that part of well, it. Now that you brought up that Joss Whedon is problematic, I just want to bring up uh, yeah. the best, the funniest thing is that the MCU, as uh-huh. we know, would not exist. Right. Or we're not for Joss Whedon and Buffy. Yeah. Now people will be like, wait, what the fuck do you mean? There's a term of like Whedon-esque. Yeah, that used to be a website. They shut it down after he got problematic. So Whedon-esque is like where, and the one thing about the Buffy series and Angel was that they would have like really, really serious moments. Yep. But they would have humor. Or they would have like characters that would be like, you wouldn't expect to be so human sounding or anything like that. Like demons or eight like ancient beings, and they would just be like people. They're just like yeah. talking, and like it'd be kind of funny. And you're like, oh, okay, this guy's all powerful, but like you know, but he's, he's just a dude, chill dude. and cool. Um, because one guy I was talking about this, uh, he didn't like The Watcher and the What If. He okay. didn't like the way uh, he was depicted. He thought like it made him kind of goofy a little bit. And sure, and I said I actually loved that. I said it starts out where he's like really stoic and he's in the distance yep. and then as he gets in and shit starts to get out of control it's like he's just a dude he's yeah. just a, he's an old powerful dude like yeah. but he's just a guy and he fucked up and he has to like try to fix things and his rules he has to follow and he's trying to find a way to and it's very wedding esque yeah all I, the marvel universe it start like when they got him to direct the first avengers movie yeah i thought it was brilliant yeah I was like this guy can handle this because he did Buffy, and Buffy was like the best X Men show that never. Yeah, that's a good point. And I know it's funny to say this about 
you know, compliment Wenda. Uh, you know, <laughs> but the MCU would not exist yeah. if it weren't for that style or whatever it is that he that him or his team, yeah, all the people that worked with him over the years, all the people that write with them, they created that style. When it is like the MCU still uses, even though Wendon has not been part of the MCU for like, well, since uh, Age of Ultron, yeah, um. They still kind of use that whole it all stems from <laughs> it's really funny it really is and i'll it's i'll say like kind of problematic if you think about it right yeah well <laughs> i mean like obviously joss whedon has like some really significant flaws but i mean like i honestly can... don't know uh i i just know that you told me there was some real gross shit one of them was like the girl from buffy was a lad not the main girl the yeah main michelle Chottenberg. The, the... wasn't allowed to be in a room alone with her <laughs> yeah and it, it, there's enough that's there so that i'm like weird. yeah there's enough there so that i'm like yeah, even if these things aren't technically true you you pissed off like 30 different people to the point where they're willing to say this stuff about you and that's yep. that's a issue in itself uh but it, it doesn't diminish his work per se because it was so it was so good and here this is this i don't know if you'll know these names or not but this is a collection of writers who came uh out of buffy um marty noxon david greenwald jane eppinson drew goddard david fury stephen s Knight. like all of those if you look at those names they're like peppered over any genre show over the last 10 years like all of them have just written tons of shows you've heard of and probably like yeah it's, i mean it was like a writer's um uh, workshop basically i mean it was it was just uh really bizarre how talented well, like i said i just think were. it's kind of funny that like uh like i said the mcu as we know it is still stems from that first avengers movie yeah. Like, yeah. And I mean, did you watch Agents of Shield ever? Oh yeah, I, the the first five seasons or whatever. how how many seasons did that go on? I think I went seven or eight, maybe seven. I probably watched the first four seasons then. Okay. I mean, I don't think I got halfway. They, through it. it had some Buffy esque, like I mean, yeah. the way they would talk and back and forth and everything. Well, they even but, had characters like you know that you could say like, oh well, that's. Didn't didn't Joss Whedon's brother write that or something? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know what's the, the deal with him. I don't know if he's like been excised. I don't know. I don't know either. I like I said. I just think it's kind of funny, and I think it was like funny too that like you know just uh, DC when they oh yeah Zack Snyder from the Justice League and brought Whedon into yeah Whedon five the. Uh, the Justice League movie to make it more like Marvel. Yeah, it is weird. I I love. You make this movie enjoyable. <laughs> that's the uh, that's the uh, that's how I would. That's probably exactly the word. Hey, right. hey, we just watched this video. Okay, so we just watched the dailies on <laughs> this fucking weird movie. <laughs> we... Where uh, uh, Aquaman goes in the water and these weird girls are singing for 20 minutes Jesus. sniffing his underwear or something can you well, like we're going for an aesthetic that that resembles tolerable that's what we we're want, going we want to sell toys to children <laughs> we want to sell underwear to children yeah. we want to put characters on cereal boxes right we're <laughs> can you make this fun right can... <laughs> i love whedon's dialogue his writing i mean so so yeah but it's it is just kind of a weird one the guy we had before took our main character superman yep. and turned him into a cold steely-eyed weirdo <laughs> Who murdered, who just allowed the whole entire city to be murdered? Can you do something about that? Hey, I got an idea. I may not be, you know, you guys hired me because I'm some creative genius, <laughs> but I'm just going to take the aesthetic quality from one of your old movies from the late 70s and just yeah. apply that to Superman again. Yeah, that'd work. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we kind of went on a. Yeah. Uh, well, our first, yeah. our talk first, about, talk about problematic people. Yeah, 
I mean, you're well, talking about you're, we're gonna now now we're gonna get into some real problematic shit. Yeah, Here and we I'll, go. I'll say I I looked this up. Um, here are two names: uh, David Cameron Bryan and Hannah Smith, uh, who uh, were elected recently to the uh, the school board that runs South Lake Texas's schools, and they were uh, championed by the True Texas Project. Those two <laughs> two school board members. Awesome. Yes, and. Uh, the, the school board in South Lake, which is actually the um, Carol. So good that there's this, been this documentary series that's been going around yeah. about how racist as fuck it is. <laughs> yeah, South South Lake's weird. Like South South Lake is a, a an affluent suburb of Dallas. Uh, right? Yeah, it's Would not you too say? far from us. I go there for literally the Trader Joe's. Yes. Yeah. I. I have not been to South Lake, to my knowledge. Uh, my wife goes there to, to do stuff every now and then. Um, that sounds vague. Well, she got her car there, and I'm she got like you. free oil changes when with the car. She goes there to do stuff. Well, like, anyway, Trader Joe's. Hey, they have an a uh, what's that fucking burger place that everyone loves? Oh, Shake Shack. They have one. Oh, of those. you know what? Just get this out of the way real quick. Yeah. I wanted to go to Shake Shack so bad for years. I moved out of New York and it started to become big. Yeah. And I was living in Chico, so I wasn't around. And everyone talked about how great it was. And it was so good, so good. And then I finally went to one in Austin, Texas, like years later. Yep. It's all right. They're good. I went to the one in Plano. Uh, and I went to the one in Dallas, like Prestonwood or something like that. And their fries are delish. And if you get them with a cheese sauce, they're pretty good. I will say this. I think it has something to do with the availability. And when something becomes easily available, yeah. it loses its... Uh, Allure, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it opened up by Trader Joe's in uh, South Lake. Uh -huh. We're going to talk about it. <laughs> and uh, I was like, you know what? It's okay. And now yeah. that it's like here really close to me i don't give a fuck about it sonic was like that for me too i remember oh. i would see those commercials for years and i'd be like what the fuck are they They're the type of companies that would like air commercial they purposely air in areas that they don't exist yeah do that's funny her. dairy queen does it too everywhere here dairy queen are like rats yeah dairy queen and sonics are like are literally like there's mosquitoes oh and yeah and then there's Dairy Queens and Sonics. There's, so there's like at least like I'll go on the app to get Sonic, and it'll say like, well, there's like which, six in a mile yeah, radius. Which closest one do you want to go to? They're the like outside your house, literally yeah. across the street from you. Yeah, like uh, I remember I was living in like California. And there was like a neighboring town. I was like forty minutes away, so it'd be like a special occasion if I went to it. I would mm -hmm. probably go there. So yeah, and then I moved here, and I was like, you know what? I don't give a shit. Yeah. <laughs> Ocean All right, water well, slushies. Mm. So, speaking of South Lake, though, that has nothing to do with what the fuck I was talking about for the past <laughs> couple minutes. Um, they're also known for something else. Yeah, they're they're like um, I, 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 they're known for being racist as fuck. I, <laughs> I and I, clearly not the whole town uh, because there are victims of People racism in the town. You know, <laughs> but yeah, like People like now, uh, no big deal. The, school the elected board, representatives. What? The school board has been taken over by um, right wing zealots, and uh, to, the two that I just named, uh, they were uh, David Cameron Bryant and Hannah Smith, uh, were championed by this radical right wing kind of a white supremacist group, and they won. And now uh, three, I want to say three out of the five members of the board, um, I could have my math wrong on that. But anyway, a majority of the board is run by these um, QAnon death cultists. And uh, about a month ago, they reprimanded a teacher for having a book in her classroom that was anti-racist. Yeah, uh, that's, uh, wait, what? Yeah, there, there's a trouble woman. for having a book that was a fourth a fourth grade teacher had a book on her bookshelf wasn't an assigned book or anything like that. She had a book 
that was like a toolkit for fighting racism. I think that was literally the name of the book. It was like, oh a, my god, get me the feigning couch. And it was, uh, it was like an Oprah Winfrey book of the month selection. It was a oh, New York no. Times bestseller. Triggered? Triggered. Well, Did you say Oprah? Yeah. Oh, I'm, no. I'm just saying it was like a you mainstream. You say Barack Hussein Obama? It was a mainstream book. It wasn't like you know the the anarchist cookbook approach so like if to Mayan fucking up Nazis. on her shelf would they be like oh okay good balance well, but um they sh- the a parent complained oh, the as principal. they would because they're yep and i the don't prince- want my kid to not be a racist and Wait, the principal was <laughs> the principal was like there's nothing wrong with this so then that should have been the end of it because that's the way it's run but then the school board got involved for the first time ever and reprimanded the teacher, put a, a letter of reprimand in her file because she had this book on her shelf. Uh, and so that's that's what's going on in South Lake. It's a group of parents that have a, a political action committee. And it's uh, they say right on their website, they, they are adamantly advancing Judeo-Christian values. Uh, yeah, it's, <laughs> they got a half right. They got. Uh, I was like when people think that like Judeo-Christian values includes Judaism. It does. Yeah, not. it does not. It does um, not. Judaism is not part of it. Jews for Jesus, though, it does. That's well, that's because they're fucking weirdos. <laughs> um, know, isn't Jews for Jesus just Christians? I, like I get like what they want to have a seder or something. No, I think. No. <laughs> they were all over the place in New York City. They were like a weird cult. They, they were, were big up in when I lived in New Jersey. That is there also a Masonic temple? Is that the same shit? Or is that something uh, different? I think that's different, but I don't I don't know that. So anyway, the, the school board's been taken over, and the school itself uh, and the city have a pretty nasty run of like some really awful white nationalist bullshit that's happened over the last year or two and it's getting worse and i think nbc news did a podcast called south lake on this town talking about this yeah and um and it's uh it's it's bad you know this has been going on for years this isn't recent but you know obviously these stories come out more with everything going on school boards here and everything going on with the law so one of the things that you know Again, Texas early this year suffered from a massive freeze. It lasted yeah. a little, almost like a solid week. People's houses were destroyed. Oh, yeah. They didn't have power. Tons of people died and got yep. tons of people got sick. Yep. Um, and uh, it, it was like, it was found out. I mean, not that it was found out, but it was brought up that, again, that Texas is on a week, like almost like purposely weakened grid to not be part of the federal grid or some crazy yeah. shit so it doesn't run the same wattage is not out like we're where we were we were very fortunate um thankfully we're near like buildings that must be powered so thankfully we're on that grid yeah, or yeah. something knock on wood uh but uh so we would think okay you know our elected officials would get to work do the right thing fix the power grid Make right. sure this doesn't happen again, right? Is that what they did? No, that is not what they did. <laughs> did they do they, any of that? No, they called like three or four special sessions and pushed forth um, just tons of, of bad legislation. Now, the one in, in particular here that, that's related to the South Lake uh, stuff is that they pushed forward this law that said, basically, if you are teaching anything uh controversial you need to have an opposing viewpoint presented and it can't be you're presenting it well that's the thing it's a really poorly written law uh and so in theory if someone is a holocaust denier then they're going to argue that the holocaust is controversial and you need my viewpoint put out there and you cannot put it out there as an example of stupid thinking you have to put it out there as an equally plausible it's like thing. when the fox news would have on like some supposedly like yes. a person who's an environmentalist and then they have like six lobbyists in an oil right. company and say no that's not true or so, like you're dealing with nitwits who say like you get back you know person who's like an epidemiologist or a doctor or whatever and they're like yeah you should get vaccinated and wear a mask or in a deadly pandemic and they're like no we have to hear from these Cretans who well, uh, are based on magical thinking and we have to listen to them too. And it was all based, it, it all stemmed from 
the Black Lives Matter movement and whatnot, um, and they are they're out. Well, they, it's a reaction, a reaction yes. to the Black Lives Matter. Well, yeah, it's, it's not a sure. correlate, like it's a racist reaction to yeah. something that really isn't like like Black Lives Matter is, is a big deal, but it's not like these idiots that live in South Lake are. Uh, like when they go to yeah. the uh, Gap or, or the fucking uh, GameStop in the area, <laughs> they're not running into a Black Lives Matter protest. Right. Now, then it's like not even like it doesn't even like affect them in any way whatsoever. It's just that whatever media the intake, whatever the politicians push, well, they push this anti. Uh, they make Black Lives Matter out to be this horrible group. They bring up Antifa, and it doesn't. Which has nothing to do with any. Yeah. It, no, I don't think it matters that they don't see it in their real lives. They, they hear about it on television and their kids hear about it on television and that's what they're worried about. They want to be able, they want the schools to teach their kids that the Civil War was about states' rights. Well, it's you like, know? I mean, this they is want, like kind of shit. The right wing's been going at the colleges for years and everything because yeah. they don't want, because colleges don't have to follow school curriculum. They can do whatever the fuck they want. And uh, well, I mean, they, to a point, and they can actually teach real history. Well, that's also why you see, and you see this in in Texas. You see this in in any state with a Republican governor. You see, like, well, that's weird. Why is why is a right wing political operative a chancellor at this university? Why is Condoleezza Rice a dean at this school? You know, they they install these political operatives at colleges to control yep. that narrative too. So they send Milo to the school yeah. or Ben Shapiro or Charlie Sh Kirk or any of these other pieces of shit. So they want, um, so that they, in their mind, they pass this law and they're like, now they're going to have to teach states rights and they're going to have to teach. Yeah, you're this. not allowed to say, you, you, you can't even like say the Klan's bad. Right. Yeah, you can't. So that's kind of where they thought it was going to go. And this here's where I'm kind of giving my opinion or my guess as to a school administrator in South Lake was caught on tape telling teachers, Hey, if you're going to teach the Holocaust, you the better Holocaust, have which is a, uh, just case historical anyone, fact. You know, know what it, it is. It's a real yeah. thing that happened where millions of people were killed. It was like over 6 million Jews. And then there was a whole bunch Gypsies of people, and, and, yeah, Gypsies, right. gays, Socialists, a whole bunch of different people. Catholics anyone that, too. Uh, I mean, yeah, well, anyone people, that yeah. anyone that opposed the Nazis, but but yeah, mostly and mainly went after Jewish people. Oh yeah, that was. I mean, that was obviously. Uh, do you remember the fucked up thing when like Trump was president and like it was like one of the first? It was like definitely like I think I'm pretty sure. Oh yeah, movie. I remember this. And it yeah. was like Holocaust Remembrance Day, and they tried to do this bizarre like All Lives Matter thing. <laughs> With it, and it was like, yeah, the fuck, man, this is like too. That's a layup. Like you, you, how do you screw up? Oh no, that was done on purpose because the Trump administration, oh, yeah, yeah, had actual Nazis in the administration. Well, this, and they school, were using rhetoric, replacement yeah. theory rhetoric, all the time. This school administrator got nailed on social media and in the in the news and mainstream media and left and right, um, and. Uh, and my suspicion is that she didn't deserve it. My suspicion is that she was telling the people that work under her, hey. This stupid law that yeah. we have, we have to basically right. bring an alternative thought to the Holocaust. Well, you can even tell it in the, in the tape because the woman goes, the administrator goes, if you teach the Holocaust, you should have material available that's like presents an alternative view. And Nazi one of, propaganda. Well, one of the teachers is like, <laughs> "Now we're going to watch the uh, Riefenstahl film. What was it called? Like the fucking Will to uh, Power or something? Will Power? Of right? will. Yeah, yeah. Now we're going to watch this. You know. <laughs> well, the, she even said like, then a teacher goes like, "How can you do? How can you present? Or is there an alternate view of that?" And the the oh, administrator goes, "It was in the, the producers." The administrator goes like, "Believe me, it's come up." And she's basically saying, like, look, if you want to keep your license, if you want to keep working here, then then do that. And and I, I don't want to speak for any teachers there, but like, I'll bet you 
there are good teachers there working under shitty conditions that are being terrorized by the school board and by the mayor and by the governor. And they are like, they are the underground railroad, so to speak, of that movement where they're like, I'll, I'm going to play the game, but I'm there. But here's, I'm going to teach the kids, you know, like. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, man. I, I, I think you're being too generous, man. A lot of these people in these areas, especially some of these teachers, they are just as like, they have just as like-minded as these Cretans on the board and stuff. There's. Um, I would say, but clearly the woman who. There are some, them. yes, there are some, but I, I just think if they're from the area, if they're from here and they grew up here and and they're in that area it's like that there's a really good chance that they're they now will they say something like oh yeah i have to go teach a independent a alternative thing to the holocaust which is yeah. insane but i mean also how's it if you're already saying like you got to teach the alternative uh like that the clan wasn't bad or whatever, then why would you be shocked when they say something about the Holocaust? I mean, you already opened up the box. You already opened yeah. up the box. Now here's the you know what I'm saying? Like, like this is I'm not shocked by this. This is this was eventually gonna happen. I mean well, it, it 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 already did happen. I mean, you're telling people that the you have to basically downplay how bad the clan was. Like yeah, that's insane. Like that's disgusting. And you know, well, I just wanna I wanna Oh, go ahead. What were you gonna say? No, I was gonna say it goes further than that because they they also want to be able to teach that you know Hillary Clinton was terrible, you know, and they they want to be able to teach woman who shit. never was president. Yeah, they but, want they want to demonize this person who never was president. I I wonder, <laughs> like, if I lived in South Lake, I would be very tempted to demand to know what 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 alternative views to the moon landing are being taught. You know what? What alternative? Right. Well, what's the alternative to two plus two? I, I noticed know. that I went into your I went into your school the other day and I noticed several globes, spherical. Yeah. Globes. Where's my? Where uh, are I, the? Yeah. I, where's where the are the flat the, plate? Where's the dome? Yeah. And I, honestly, you could like run them into the ground with just a few things like that. You. I mean, you this would, is the complete destruction of education at this point. I mean, they want to destroy. First of all. The right wing and the Republicans, and everything, which is the same thing, they want to destroy public education. Yeah. Like, again, what did they do this year? They got rid of the mask. They put in an anti mask mandate into yeah. a school, knowing that, especially in elementary schools where kids are not vaccinated, right? And of course, dipshit parents who don't put masks on their kids, well, they're not going to because there's a fucking law that, or yeah. no mandate. So of course they're not going to do the right thing because they suck. And they live in an area where they elect people that suck too. And then on top of it, so you already know that they, and they, and these fucking pieces of shit that put in these laws, send their kids to private schools that had mask mandates. Yeah. And you're like, wait, why is the public school not allowed to, why are you giving my kid COVID? Why are you spreading COVID among children and teachers? But the private school isn't. And yeah, you're sending well, your kid there. Why is it is the public school not good enough for your kid? You're making it unlivable for my kid. A lot of the people that do uh, want to reform education tend to homeschool their kids, which is... Well, homeschool or sent to private schools that they that abide to whatever their religion is yeah. or whatever and uh you know it's like ted cruz sends his kids to public school he's not sending his kid i mean not public school he sends yeah. his kid to private school and those private schools require masks yeah. so we already start with that right and then you get into this thing about destroying education right that's the other key you make it to the point where the kids are not going to get a proper education yeah so eventually after a while parents going to be like i got to get my kid out of here and then now they're homeschooling or they're sending it to a private school. The, the public schools are not getting the money anymore. This is all yeah. made to destroy public education. And also it's just stupidity. There's not all of this is some grand evil scheme. Some of it is just straight up oh, yeah. stupidity like and, and imbeciles. Like it's just imbeciles running things into the ground naturally. Like they don't have to like... It wasn't some great scheme. Yeah, it, it was just a, a bunch of fucking idiots. So like, <laughs> they're fucking idiots. Yeah. And to like say like, okay, you're gonna teach the alternative? What the fuck? Like, yeah. this madness. 
It, but are you shocked? Are you shocked anymore? Like I said, back, you know, if you went two decades, like when I was a kid and, or in high school, I found some Nazi, uh, uh, a guy I knew who, uh, I don't know what his politics were or whatever, but he showed me this horrible comic oh, yeah. pamphlet and it was a neo-Nazi comic. And it had all this horrible shit they've been pushing for decades. anti how uh, Holocaust didn't happen. Yep. Jews are making this up. Or, or and here's another sick fucking thing that I, I uh, that a lot of these Nazi piece of shits push is um, this other thing. They go, oh no, the Holocaust happened, but the evil rich Jews uh, to get their Israel uh, put in. Um, they they sent pe- their own people to the camp. Yeah, and it's like what? No, that's that's not what it is. It's, it's disgusting. It's so gross. It's like, again, it's like the rapist getting away with it or murderers getting away with it. It's like they're not taking any blame. They blame they blame the victim. It's the most disgusting thing. So like, I'm not shocked that these people are are being told they have to teach an alternative. And on top of it, I, and I wanted to say this to you because I and you're not the only one. A lot of people were using this, like especially when like the whole abortion thing went through. Yeah. Texas, a lot of pe- anti-abortion thing. A lot of people were saying Texas Taliban. Right? Yeah, yeah. I, I, and I was I, like, you got to stop saying that. Stop saying it because one, Taliban's on power here, and United States has doesn't need um, is has proven for centuries to be able to do its own disgusting harm to people. Yeah. It didn't need uh, the Middle East or whatever boogeyman is out there. It's the fucking clan. The Texas, the the people who put the people, the TTP, all these people, like they're the sons and daughters of clan members. All yeah. these motherfuckers who who are on the board, or any of these people, I guarantee you, guarantee you that they have a fucking clan hood somewhere in their house or in their grandparents' house. I yeah, I look, I don't, I don't have any problem with people using Texas Taliban, um, just because. I, I, my, my, well, my gut on it is, um, A, it's alliterative, and it is memorable, and it sounds, it kind of flows off the tongue. It's, it's like a, a verbal meme. Um, and two, it there's definitely like a religious kind of fervor to it. And the, I know the clan the, was a religious... The, the, art, the extreme right-wing Christians don't need are terrible on their own. They don't need whatever uh, form of Muslim or Islam or whatever that yeah. we have really no idea about unless you're, you know, you read the Quran, you understand the religion. We have that here. We don't, we already, we don't need the, uh, to, to describe the disgusting laws being pushed by these pigs as a, to blame, to use as a way to like, as like, how could this be? How could this yeah. be in America? It's like they're bringing the top on here. They don't need it. It's been here. It's been ingrained here. This country, like the Klan, for example, was like they're all God-fearing Christians, they would say. And also, I think when, and it's not, I'm not attacking you. I'm not, yeah. uh, even though it may look like I'm pointing, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm pointing my finger at you, Joe. No, but like, another thing too is when I see, when you see the Texas Taliban thing, not you, just in general. Yeah. Um, I think it, it's like a thing that we get, we understand, but the people doing it don't give a fucking shit. If yeah. you say it's the clan, you're lifting up their hood and explaining, oh yeah, it's the fucking clan that's doing it. When you I say look- Texas Taliban, you're kind of like making it sound a little fantastical and you're kind of removing some of the blame from these fuckers because they, again, they don't, they don't need that. The United States has never needed help to be bigots. The, it's a known fact that the Nazis actually learned methods from the South and from the slave owners. Yeah, I can and see that. And what they did with Black people here. And what they, the United States has never needed help. If anything, we have exported how to like demonize. Yeah, I would say, I guess I would say, and and I don't believe this to be true. I'm just saying that this is kind of my, my gut feeling on it, that the average person, if you, if you picked an average person in an average town 
and mentioned the Ku Klux Klan or the Klan or whatever, that that person would say that that's kind of like a thing of the past and it's not a real threat anymore. I don't, I don't believe that, but I'm just saying that I think that that's kind okay, of. Seen... And I agree with you that, like, as a, like, are there are there clan rallies or there people marching the street? No, they don't have to do it anymore. They right. don't need to. They go to Trump rallies. They don't right. have to have a clan rally. They can do it out in the open. It's called yeah. a school board meeting now. Like, they don't have to do. They don't have to uh, do any of those things. It's a uh, you know open carry thing. Yeah. or an anti-abortion thing. They don't have to hide behind a hood anymore. So when you bring up that it's a clan, it's like reminding people, like, oh yeah, this is where it stems from. Yeah. I don't know. It, I, I, I don't disagree with you. It's like put the hood back on them. You know what I mean? Like it's like the hood's off and because the, the hood doesn't exist in, in, in most people's mind because it is something we see in black, white photos or stuff yeah. on you, like old you know <laughs> just like old things like that and we view it as this thing but it's it's here it's yeah. never left and like i said all those people on the school board all those ttp people they're all fucking clan members yeah the ttp is the clan we it, you yeah call for sure whatever they want they could dress they could say whatever it is they could call it the the, it, the true texas project i mean what the fuck is that that sounds yeah. like i mean the tea party movement what was that about? Well, Come the on. True Texas Project was originally the Tea Party. It was right. like the Tea, the party, tea party of Karen Karen. Yeah. Was basically the clan. I yeah, mean, that, like, again, are they do they have dragon wizards or whatever the fuck? <laughs> like, no, but yeah, oddly, <laughs> coincidentally, the South Lake High School's mascot is the dragon, which I thought was <laughs> I know, I remember that. It's like, you gotta yeah. be kidding the, me. The fucking grand dragon. Right. Or, like, I mean, like, yeah, why are you carrying a burning cross? Well, you, there's a lot of, look, I remember when I, when I taught uh, in high school, there was a lot, a lot of uh, private Christian schools, their football teams or sports teams were named the Crusaders. That was a big. I remember as a kid and I didn't think about it. And then I realized like, especially over the years and I learned from like weird Nazi online yep. shit, dude, that shit's like fucking crusades and all that yeah, shit. That's a, dude, that's that's a like, literal rabbit hole to neo-Nazism. Yeah. Many, many for for neo Nazis, many a nofap November has been ruined by the Crusades Wikipedia entry. They just they read that. Wait, what <laughs> is that a joke? <laughs> Wait, yeah, <what>? I, was, <laughs> I was saying that many, many neo Nazis have their nofap November ruined. No uh, fap. Si oh, yeah. said no fap. No uh, fap. <laughs> simply by stumbling across the Wikipedia entry for the Crusades. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't return to you. I thought you said no fact. <laughs> yeah, dude. Like, if you okay, so if like you're online, yep, and somebody stumbles onto your account, leaves yep. a comment, and it's awful, and they just happen to have an icon of a character with a with a cross on a knight's yeah. helmet. Yeah. Uh, block them immediately. Right. They're they're. They're a, a neo Nazi or a, a white and supremacist. And I was going to say again, a lot of this, and why is shit just getting worse is because social media, YouTube, yeah. and all that stuff had done nothing to stop or prevent these people. Because again, they don't have to say, they don't have to wear a Klan hood or wear a Nazi armband. Like, I would hear these stupid people like, oh, call Trump a Nazi. Oh, yeah, because he's got camp. Oh, he did. Like, no, because he's like using the same rhetoric. Yeah. and pushing the same bullshit like is he have like uh are they goose stepping no they might as well be it is weird but like, like that, and i guess that kind of gets to your original point about using a phrase like texas taliban or texas clan or nazis or whatever I, there, there is like the the language is not perfect because it never seems to nail what this i mean this is basically just white supremacy you know, well, I mean, that's why I say the Klan is the best way to describe it, because in the end of the day, Nazis uh, will always be correlated with Nazi Germany. It just will be. Yeah. And uh, you could always say, well, yeah, duh, of course not, because it was, <laughs> it was in Germany. Right, right. But the Klan is a perfect example for homegrown, the United States. Yeah. Oh, it is homegrown. It is as, as America as apple pie. Yeah. And I'm telling you, like these you call these motherfuckers the clan it is not a uh a undeserved like euphemism or whatever like 
So yeah, it takes time, but I think again, I just think when you when you say that, and I <laughs> or not, you, yeah, yeah. when that phrase gets used, it makes it sound fantastical, and it removes the it removes the blame and harm that's being pushed as if because when the people of the United States think of the Taliban, they think of nine eleven. Yeah, and they think of nine eleven. They think of Osama bin Laden, even though <laughs> like again, none of these things like the Taliban was a separate thing, and then uh, yeah. Regardless, I guess like also too, and, and I'm trying to think like through when I was because uh, I did use the term. I still do. I mean, it's not like, but like I, you know, will, people, never, I will never stop using the Texas. Carved that shit on my, I'm not out of my to to you. No, but like when I think, and I'm not saying the Klan were like women's rights advocates or anything. By any oh, yeah. <laughs> but like when I think of like, when I think of women's uh, uh, feminism and everything. I think of the Klan. When I think of like anti, like anti women's law, you know, or like people that are attacking women's and abortion rights and stuff like that, I don't immediately jump to the Klan. You know what I mean? Like, although I, think I understand Klan, what you're saying uh, on that. And I get and, that because uh, they're known for treating their women really well. Yeah. <laughs> well, like the Klan, I'm sure they treat women poorly. No, but I like, meant the Taliban as well. Yeah. Treating women very well. And I remember <laughs> I, I tweeted about this that the Taliban, the Taliban, when they took over in Afghanistan, they published laws about abortion and they were more liberal than Texas's laws. <laughs> you know, they were. They were straight up, they said, like, That's if what you. I heard. If, if the woman is going to die without getting an abortion, she should get an abortion. And like, like we're that's, not, she, they're like, we're not animals. Yeah, they're like, <laughs> like right, land in Texas. <laughs> so I think, and again, like, I, I don't have like super strong feelings about it one way or the other. My big fear at the time was like, is this a, Islamophobic? You know, and, and ultimately I was like, I don't think it's Islamophobic because this is about religious fundamentalism and religious extremism. And to me, the better analogy is the Taliban than the Klan, because the Klan, although they're probably like religious well, head I, cases I just too, think like, uh, they're more like race, <laughs> a different kind of. Okay, they're, I think we're being too little about the Klan thing. Yeah. I just think like when you say, when people were saying Taliban, I'm not saying it's Islam, I mean, is it Islamic phobic or anything like that? I mean, no, because the Taliban is not Islam. Yeah, and, and plenty it's of- like saying that like- Plenty of um, Muslims want nothing to do with the Taliban. Right, like, right. Like it's the majority like, want nothing to do with the Taliban. Right, but when people think of the Taliban, they think of- Yeah, that's, true. that's a good point. I'm not, and again, I'm not trying to like, I'm saying that like, that the United that that term, it was funny in the beginning because it's like, and you think, but these people don't give a fuck. Yeah. They don't care for Colm. We could call them whatever. They don't give a shit. I just think if you call them what they fucking are, though, yeah, like clan or whatever, it, you know, it's kind of like the remember that show. Uh, I don't know if they did a season two. It was on Amazon. We did an episode on it. It was the one about oh the yeah, the hunters or something. Hunters or. Yeah, and like whenever they would get the Nazis, it was almost like the vampires from uh, yeah. fucking uh, Buffy. Like they yeah, did, yeah. Became like literal like evil ghoulish Nazis. It was really right. weird. Like all of a sudden they're like, oh, him not. Like all of a sudden they were like thick accents. Yep. But like I feel like it's almost like that. If you just it, you, you just tell them what they fucking are, the fucking clan or whatever yeah. Christian theocratic, not you know whatever. It, it it is an attack on them. It's an yeah. attack on their character. The Taliban thing, I think it removes them from it. It becomes this like force that is not responsible. Like they're not the ones responsible now. It's, yeah. it's a foreign force that we have no power or control over. You know? It, I could it, see that. It, it's like, um, it, it's like we, people were saying, and a lot of like liberal people were saying something like that as like a reaction to it. Like, and it sounds like smart when you say it, because it's like, yeah, you're right. It's so theocratic. It is like the Taliban. And I heard like this one guy say it on a progressive channel. The guy happened to be Muslim though. The guy who, coined, sure. uh, I forgot his, Dino Abadaya was the guy. And he was saying it a lot. He's been saying it for years. He calls them like the, he calls the republicans like the taliban or whatever y'all qaeda that's a good one yeah y'all qaeda y'all qaeda is funnier at least because it is pretty funny. i honestly think that's even better uh yeah you know what why don't you say y'all qaeda that's the acceptable you know it's like when people were saying like hey you can't say the midget anymore you guys right yes 
dwarf or I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, what was that little person? Yes. I'm like, how's yeah. that better? And you're like, listen, I don't... you're like, listen, listen. We're trying to figure this out. Okay. Right. We haven't come up with the right thing yet, but we would prefer little person over. Yeah. You don't get to decide. We'll decide on this. We'll decide. We'll tell you when we get there. Right. We're not there yeah. yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How about awesome? Awesome. Right. <laughs> well, um, that's the yeah, that's the the South Lake thing in a nutshell. Um I don't know where it's going to go. Like they had another meeting. They, their Twitter account now, the the Carol ISD, they don't allow comments. <laughs> smart. <laughs> this is the only smart thing they're doing. <laughs> um, but they have meetings left and right, and like um, they got a gun to their head by the uh, the, the the clan. <laughs> well, also they they don't they run the Texas clan. They don't care. You know, they they got in power. They've got a couple yeah. of years to work with. They're, just not, they're not going to get recalled or anything. They were elected by people. And so there's plenty of people They were sent there to make South. sure masks yeah. couldn't be mandated. That was yep. one. And then uh, attack trans kids was two. Yeah. And, and uh, make sure critical race theory or whatever it yeah. is they think it is isn't being taught. I still think, I, and I, I'm surprised no one's done that. I, I'm stunned that no one has started slamming them. That's the problem with shitty laws is that a lot of them are written really poorly and there should be an activist in South Lake demanding flat earth globes and demanding all Yeah, I, I agree with you 100%. Landing. Like that should o- totally open the door. I mean, it's almost like the same thing with like when um, the, in like Arkansas or something, they put the Ten Commandments there and the, yep. uh, you know, we need our version of the satanic church yep. coming in and basically saying, we're going to put Baphomet up. Like, where's the lesson? We're religion. On- Where's the lesson what? planned on Reagan being a war criminal? You know, yeah. where's where's that? That's a pretty controversial thing. Where's the where's the uh, Pilgrim's genocide lesson? Where's the JFK know? assassination? Uh, yeah, I demand that. I need to know. Like, right? I, we have to at least watch <laughs> JFK for <laughs> one or two days. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah. Where are we going to do a lesson plan on uh, the People's History of the United States by Howard Zinn? Yeah, I think we have ever. I mean, if we got to learn this, we're going to learn this. You know what I think is really funny, and I'm sure you're aware of this. Living in Texas, yeah. it's like one of the only states. My son is actually ahead of because uh, we've been homeschooling him. Yeah, yeah. We're, you know, we're not sending him in with no mask and shit um, until he's vaccinated, at least. Um, he's actually learning history on time because last year in fourth grade. Everyone had to learn about Texas history. Yeah. The only state in the country that mandates a, uh, a like a state history. Now, I could be wrong. Am well, wrong? that, yeah, because Florida, I had to take uh, Florida history in uh, fifth grade. Was that the whole grade? Though? It was the entire year. And it, it culminated in a, a week long trip to the Everglades. Uh, it's just, we, uh, it's just orange juice propaganda. <laughs> yeah, totally. No, but that is funny because I remember uh, like a week or two ago, I mentioned the, the word brackish water. Yeah. <laughs> That's where I learned it. My Florida history class. Well, maybe it's a good idea that Florida has that uh, because there's like, it's probably why you're alive. So you don't drink brackish water. That's also how I learned to differentiate between a coral snake, which will kill you, and a corn snake, which are kind of fun to play with. What the so, hell they do? Oh no, I thought this was the fun snake. Uh, red. Oh red, shit, if I only attended school that day. <laughs> red touch black, happy jack. Red touch yellow, kill the fellow. That's how, about, it. how about it's a fucking snake, ew. <laughs> Don't go near it. It's gross and disgusting. Well, I'll tell you. It, it's my, not a, uh, wait, my apologies to any of you weirdos with a bow constrictor in a tank i mean to offend you herpophiles um <laughs> that sounds weird <laughs> what are they called well a, a snake scientist is a herpetologist so i'm imagining a snake lover would be a herpophile that right? um, that is they need to come up with a better name <laughs> snake man snake jake the snake like herpophile yeah it does sound sounds bad. like something john landis defends <laughs> poorly decision making yeah um well it wouldn't, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't stun me if um 
if uh it wouldn't stun me if a lot of um states had a, a state history requirement uh maybe who knows I, florida did though i remember that um yeah my my kid brought homework home tonight and she's learning about the boston tea party oh. and uh it was um the 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 t- this stuff she brought home was fine but like as an adult you look at it and you're like eh, th- this is a pretty pretty whitewashed version of oh yeah of oh, the, oh, i remember learning about in school it's first of all like the whole idea of it's pretty bad when you think about it it's like a bunch of yeah. fucking white guys dressed up as like supposedly dressed up like native americans yeah and, yeah like, don't tea i bet you there's not at all what happened yeah it's it's pretty fucked up and and i get that like like you're these kids are in fifth grade they're not gonna they can't yet understand the nuance of a lot of things but like well you know what honestly if you think about that okay so kids tea learn that which i did that age Yep. You think it's fine that that was okay for them to do that as if it was like some weird. And then you like grow up and you're like, well, of course people are okay with like Indian mascots and you know what I'm saying? Like it yeah. like trivializes these people and stuff. That's why like when they changed the mascots for these teams, it was a big fucking deal because it's like yeah. they're people. They're not magical creatures and like. Right. <laughs> but you, you put like when the way we learn about the boston tea party and all that stuff it's like it's it leads to that in a way yeah thinking it does i mean it's it's tough i mean like there's some developmental stuff with like kids at certain ages and everything but um i don't know i'm I'm definitely going to keep up on the south lake uh school situation Um, you sent me that one video the guy uh, the jewish guy talking to them i'm sure it changed none of their minds is their ideologues and... well i think i think two this is a weird one two members of the school board i believe are pretty liberal and three are pretty very very conservative um and like i said i could be getting the numbers wrong on there but there are a few because I, I when i first heard about this i was getting ready to start bashing people on twitter or whatever but then i i was reading about it and it was like no a couple of these school board members are like good people you know they're trying to do the right thing and i don't i don't know what they think going to bed at night you know having to work like that but i mean in the end of the day it's not even really just the school board it's the the stupid law that, yeah uh they're stuck having to deal with and yeah. it's like i said you know i have to listen to that video of that woman who uh what's her name the other name i i forget her name it was a uh, it was a the the administrator it was the kind when of a she's long... reading it She's not reading it in a way of like, you will do this. It was more like, uh, yeah. yeah. So like, guys, uh, I got to explain this to you, but like, if you're going to teach about the Holocaust, you got to give them an alternative. Yeah. Yeah. What the yeah. fuck <laughs> is that? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> like, I mean, then, oh, man, this is, we're fucked. Yeah. I'm well, sorry. That, 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 that's, that's a rot, man. That's like it's like the foundation is rotting. It's a shitty thing. Like teachers are stuck. I, I taught for a number of years, and I taught mostly at the college level, which is a different story. But I did teach in the high schools for a while too, and it sucks. Like if a kid comes to you and says, uh, "My parents are super Christian, and they said that you know gay people are going to hell, but I'm gay. What do I do?" Like you as a human you're like i gotta help this kid out and support him or her or whoever or whatever but like if you start meddling then parent i mean that's there's laws against that too you can't go to someone else's kid and start coaching them against their parents you know you, you get in big trouble for that so it's like a really fucked up impossible situation for good people who teach you know um it's, it's just- yeah, go ahead. It's just sad. You know, I mean, like, you want to do right by the kid, but you also don't want to go to jail for it. You know, I mean, like, you. Well, like I said, the thing about the. I was talking to my wife about this the other day. And I said, like, you know, every day as time goes on, less and less people that experience the Holocaust are going to be alive. Like, That's true. We're at the point now where the only people who are really alive that experienced it were people who were children. Yeah, yeah. There were many children, and they 
they survived and were able to, and that they had the tattoos and they were there. And what's disgusting about these uh, Holocaust deniers and these awful pieces of shit people, they're, they're not good people. I'm sorry, you're just, you're bad. Yeah, they're awful. You're a bad person. Um, is um, these people are going to be dead soon. Like they're old. Yeah. It's just, that's how it works. <laughs> you know, it's like uh, my, the people that my grandparents' age just died decades ago. You know, the older people, the ones that were adults during the camp, they're, there's a good chance they're not alive unless they're like 100, over 100 years old. Yeah. Um, but the people that were kids, they're in there going into their 80s and these people, and every day you lessen them are around and every day some scumbag is able to convince another person that this, it didn't happen. Yeah. And it's really disgusting and distressing that um, this happened, that that the Texas Klan, as I'll just say, <laughs> the, the GOP, the Texas GOP Klan, um, it's like it's done on purpose. Yeah. Because they know within a couple of years, and then they'll be able to like, I, mean, I don't even know what the end game, what's the end game? Like, that's, I think that's always been like, problematic. It, in the sense that like they they what they want doesn't exist what they want never existed you know they they want all of them if you talk to them they want to return to post-world war ii america you know right. but like that that wasn't what they think it was and it certainly wasn't good for everyone i mean it might have been good for a few returning gis that had healthy benefits or whatever that, that but were white yeah, that were white. That were white. Um, Key. But like, it's just so bizarre because they, they want to return to that time period, which sucked for most people, women, persons of color, was ostensibly good for white middle class people, but was also a time of like really big socialist programs. Right. Like, they, 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 all these things existed because of social, or what they would deem socialism or whatever, these programs, government-backed programs are the reason why these people were yeah. in college for Interstate like Interstate highways, the great I, know, I, always I, mean, find that, I always find that hysterical that these motherfuckers want to get rid of like the, the, the brand, was it the, the brand new deal? Or what's it called? Yeah, uh, the, the new deal. Yeah, the new deal and all that stuff. They want to like do away with every element of it. It's like, you don't get to the 50s Without the Great New Deal, you don't get out of the fucking depression. So that's the the end game is is this imaginary place where post World War II America was achieved through raw capitalism, and that never happened. That's that a does, lie. That... And every the one thing they'll always push is this innovation thing. That that capitalism is the thing that thrives innovation, and that's not true oh. at all. It, yeah. Most innovation, most of like anything that we have a technology or anything like that is because of government backing. And yeah. then the private sector comes in and profits off of everything that was discovered. All the mistakes and all the, the R&D and research that initially starts with government backing. I mean, look at the fucking vaccine, for example. Yeah. The whole thing was backed by the government and then these fucking like pharmaceutical companies come in and profit off of it. But like, it, it wouldn't have happened without the government yeah. backing or it wouldn't have happened as quickly that's well a, a good example of it and that's another reason why the right wingers hate the vaccine is because again yeah. it's like it's the closest thing we have to like a socialist program is hey i can get this thing that's free yeah and it, it mm -hmm. happened quickly and spurred by yeah uh, well this is actually a good transition to our next topic because speaking of shitty pharmaceutical ghouls um Joe Manchin is the father of a shitty pharmaceutical cool. Hey, before we get to that, though, yeah, yeah, uh, I just want to talk. Did you see the video of William Shatner going into space? I did. Yeah, yeah. That's another good example of like, like these like weird fucking little sh rocket dick rocket ships up into like space yeah. for a minute that are like, I, like it's not. It doesn't seem innovative at all. It's like, yeah. what happened to them fucking NASA? Why are yeah. you paying attention to this shit? It's like the William Shatner thing was smart because it was like, well, let me get straight up. 
if Leonard Nimoy was alive, William Shatner would not. Have been <laughs> Leonard Nimoy would have been in that. But I don't think Leonard sure. Nimoy would. Have, Leonard Nimoy, I heard this. He probably wouldn't have done it. He probably would have been like, "Fuck you." Yeah. Yeah, base bozo. <laughs> um, I don't know. I just wanted to bring that up real quick because I was thinking about that. Like yeah. generalization, everything was going on with space travel and stuff. All right, go on. Sorry, Mansion. Well, Ma- Mansion and Cinema were the next people on our list. Um, yeah, to talk about. Of- yeah, I mean, the, the pharmacy thing got me going on Mansion because Mansion's daughter uh, raised the price of EpiPens uh, to squeeze money out of people that might die if they don't have EpiPens. And uh, uh, Kristen Sima is basically like a pharmacy lobbyist. Yeah. She's not really a senator. She She's is. a lobbyist for the pharmaceutical company. These two are just so frustrating. Joe Manchin, I get, and you and I have talked about this before. I, I get that Joe Manchin is the best we're going to get out of West Virginia. That's, I, yeah, I don't believe that. I think there's better people. Oh, there's better there's people there. Better. West it's Virginia just, voted for Trump at like 70%. Okay, so 70% of the people who voted in West Virginia. He's going to bring coal back. They're not going to vote for anyone better than Joe Manchin. He was going to bring black lung black back. Yeah, right? He's like, I'll bring it back. You can all die in your I, 40s. These beautiful iron lungs. Uh, <laughs> You know what's um, really, you know what's really beautiful, dying it before you're fifty. That's beautiful. Well, you don't have to worry about peeing your pants as an old man, holding your grandchild. You don't have to worry about it. Kristen Cinema, though, is another matter entirely. You could get a much better candidate in, in Arizona. You should be able to. Yeah. I mean, you would think now, so. She was a bit of a Trojan horse because I thought I was pretty excited about her initially. You know, her one was she yeah. grew. We talked about this in the previous podcast. It said she like kind of was part of the uh, blue wave in yep. 2018. They called it, and uh, you know that was kind of like a response to like Kavanaugh and everything that was going on with yeah. Trump, and it was kind of the whole Me Too movement. So you saw a lot of new like. Women that came in, uh, especially in Congress, AOC, uh, Elon Omar, uh, the squad, basically, yep. um, a lot more progressive people coming in, and uh, mostly in the Congress, in the House. Yeah. Uh, but you saw a little bit in the Senate. Senate's always been a little weird, because uh, it's, unfortunately, it requires a lot more money. And cinema kind of came in and like, was part of that a little bit. Um, and... Uh, uh, that's she's been so, terrible just she's really awful. terrible she you know, like, like went to france or something recently yeah like she like fled the country and then again this is all because of citizens united yeah she basically went there to like fundraise We're in a foreign country what that's yeah illegal. well and she she gets like a t- she they she and mansion both have fundraisers where they just invite republicans you know uh i mean I, I, okay so like the media does a horrible job of like attacking, you know, pointing out like, so Joe Manchin voted against the like, or is against some environmental thing, right? Yeah. But the media doesn't do it. The mainstream media doesn't do its job of pointing out that like the Joe Manchin is a, a millionaire because of like, he's basically like a coal miner baron. Yeah. Well, he, it, it's, and oddly he represents west virginia and they're all coal miners yeah you know? but he I mean, has like, he he's invested he, he personally money, benefits he yeah. like he he's worth millions because of all the stocks and stuff he owns yeah and it's like or when they say like lobbyist which is like a fun way of saying bribed yeah like these people like none of this shit should be legal no like we learned about lobbyists remember like hillary clinton said something about the, the 2016 campaign she was asking about lobbyists, right? And she brought up a good point and said, not all lobbyists are evil. There's people yeah. who lobby for really good things. Sure. It's just you always hear about the evil ones. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you're right. Because, like, the, the people that want uh, gun control or gun reform. That requires have, lobbying. They're lobbyists, you know, so. But that's... maybe we can stop calling the ones that just pay people, like, millions of dollars. <laughs> just call them bribers or whatever the word is. Well, <laughs> the Texas it is. Alabama. I think that I think the the problem is that if you and this is where Kristen Cinema fucked up. No one who voted for Joe Manchin in West Virginia, I don't think anyone got something different than what they voted for. 
You know what I mean? They may not like it, but like I'll bet you if you yeah, gathered but I mean, up, like, do people live there? Like they don't want their roads fixed. Like I saw photos of like roads in West Virginia that look like yeah, uh, it you know it looks like Mordor is like what Palooza. it looks like. Is what it looks like. I mean, like <laughs> it's it, it's a it's a yeah, but the people there know what they're getting out of joe mansion they've kind of resigned themselves to it they that, that they, i'll bet it you, fits you into the culture i guess yeah. in some way i just think a lot of it though is more just like man some of these red states are set up to like just let disgusting rich people come right. in and like they they have enough ways of getting people to like not vote find ways you know but if you ask, what no i was gonna say but, but if you ask this people in arizona the same thing about cinema i'll bet you a lot of them would be like i this is startling i had no idea she was going to be like this uh, yeah, i think that's I, that's where you get in trouble it's still not as progressive as you think it like oh no i'm not saying arizona is progressive i'm just saying that if you if a democrat a democrat voting for mansion in west virginia is like yeah no that's who he is a democrat voting for cinema in arizona is going to be like that is not who i thought she was that's well, my, the problem is, it's not really that a Democrat is voting for Manchin, is that enough Republicans are willing to vote for Manchin. That's the true. Democrat is voting for Manchin because they're not really given a choice and they're not going to vote for the Republican. Manchin's shitty enough to get yeah. Republicans to vote for him because it is predominantly, is it a predominantly Republican state? You know, I, I'm going to say, and I'm going to look this up. Um, I'll bet you there's a ton of people that were Democrats like 30, 40 years ago that stayed Democrats, but have voted Republican for the last Reagan Democrats, those fucking yeah. people. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so I'll bet you there's more Democrats than you would think. Uh, I hate when the media would say Reagan Democrats. I'm like, you mean Republicans, right? Like, yeah. you know, like 40 years ago? <laughs> Basically. <laughs> They're Republicans. Like, it's like, Two election, you know what? Two presidential election cycles. If you fucking voted Republican, yeah, you're a Republican. Unless you change, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I think this whole like, like if the last Democrat you voted for was Bill Clinton, you're a Republican. Yeah. All right. Here, here's the voter breakup as of this year in West Virginia: thirty-eight percent are Republican and thirty-five percent are Democrat. So the rest is a lot of independents that unaffiliated, but probably vote right wing anyway. Yes, yeah, but but that's how I think. Um, you know, and just like any other state, I'm sure there's liberal parts of West Virginia. Uh, like Wheeling is probably pretty liberal, and there's probably a few college you towns. Think the that Earth are... is sort of round. <laughs> <laughs> the Earth is an oval. We wear um, a half a mask. <laughs> we give Tylenol to our kids. We're very progressive. Yes. We think the, that the Earth and the Sun are, revolve <laughs> around each other. We enjoy both kinds of music, country and we are, Western. Country. <laughs> We're very progressive. This is the progressive part of West Virginia. Yes. yes. We drink drip coffee, which is <laughs> the closest thing to a latte drink in the Bible. Uh, <laughs> we believe the Bible is partly metaphorical. We believe it's <laughs> from <laughs> select passages. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, all right. Well, um, yeah, that's that's political satire. Right there. Yeah. <laughs> You're not going to get that anywhere else. I guess. I mean, I, I don't know if we need to lump these into the mansion cinema thing. I guess this is all part of the. the, the well, mansion is just. Uh, oh, one of the things that came up today, though, me and you were talking about it, is you sent me this tweet saying that like mansions considering. Yeah. Basically leaving the Democratic Party and becoming like what independent. Yes. Now, since since then, Manchin has come out and said that that rumor is bullshit. But it looked like a pretty specific rumor. You know looked, what? I kind of hope he does it because then I think if if the Dems are smart, they would uh, it would open up. They would. Uh, what's his face? Uh, what what's that guy's name? The Attorney General. Um, oh, uh, uh, Merrick Garland. Merrick Garland will be like, you know, I'm going to start looking into your uh, 
to some of your yeah. stuff, you know, your I think, stuff. I and, think it'd be a disaster. I hope he stays a Democrat. Oh, I, 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 okay. So, like, my problem with him and cinema is is that, like, I don't feel like the Democrats have a majority at this point. They really don't. I mean, they do, but they don't, right? Like, they're yeah. getting. I feel like they're getting worse. They're not. They're not getting better. The two of them are just like. They are getting worse. That's true. Just like getting worse. And like it's good. It, it's like it starts here with the fucking up the entire uh, infrastructure bill. Yep. And any type of necessary progressive uh, things that need to be done. Just, or not even, pro- it shouldn't even be called progressive. It's just like shit that needs to be done just if you want to have sense. like yeah. a country in, in decades now, uh, a functioning one. And um, I just think they're getting worse and worse to the point that it's like, would it even fucking matter if McConnell was back in power? I mean, like, it would because right now J- Joe Biden's getting a lot of judges on minor courts. Right. All of that would stop tomorrow. Yeah, you, and would, you would you would have no no judges appointed for the next three years. Yeah, the end. You know, yeah. and and Joe Biden's got a lot of ground to make up with those judges. Yeah. And if you want anyone all those judges need to be like 16 17, yeah 20 and in good health yeah, yeah they need uh and so there's that and on the off chance that there's a supreme court retirement there's you won't get i was gonna say well, the one that should happen the, the fucking guy has no intention of leaving this guy who yeah. who suffered from cancer he already like oh what was it like earlier this year he put in like a request for new clerks or something yeah. like which was like a like a, his way of sticking his finger up at everybody and saying yeah fuck well yeah. it it would be a disaster if if he if he does not continue to caucus with the Democrats I think and that's like in two years I guess the Democrats might pick up a few Senate seats but they're just as likely to lose the House it's. They, they got to keep him on the Democrats team for the next year at least. Yeah, what the fuck happens with cinema? I mean, like, my there's like theories or whatever, Squid Game theories. Yeah, of, uh, <laughs> yeah where she won't even run again because she doesn't have to. The whole thing was like one big grift, and she just like. I could see that. I think she's she like. Just decides, I'm not running again. I feel like if that was the case, though, well, let's see. She came in 18. I mean, she's not up till 2024. Yeah. So she has, she'll probably, if she were to announce that she's not going to run, it would be, uh, it probably wouldn't be till like 2023. That she, yeah. Like, yeah, I'm not running again. I, I, yeah, I could see that. I, I just have like no respect for her. I think it's entirely a cash grab for her. She's a great even, Like, she, even I mean, Republicans what? are like in it for the culture wars or whatever. She's like 100% in it for free trips, money. Like you like bullshit like that. It's like you ever watch that show Get a Life with Chris Elliott? We talked yeah. about Excellent. Yeah. There's an episode where it's amazing. Anything could be referenced back to Get a Life. Yeah. Excellent show. When they get stuck on top of the roller coaster and have to sit down. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant yeah. writing. Um, one of the episodes though is Chris Elliott becomes like a meat inspector <laughs> and he and but he gets bribed. They pay him like five bucks. <laughs> So he's looking at his table of money. He's got like ninety dollars or something. That's Kristen Cinema right now. She's like yeah. hey, five dollars. I mean, the woman was eating out of trash cans. I mean, yeah. anything's gonna be an improvement, right? I yeah yeah. Uh, well, speaking, speaking of things that aren't <laughs> speaking of things that are aren't an improvement, the um I don't even know if I have too much to say about this, but. The January 6th committee uh, met today and they voted um, to send, the January 6th committee voted to send a criminal referral for contempt uh, to Steve Bannon, and it went to a committee in the Congress today. That's awesome. I mean, yeah. what will come out of that? Well, I don't know. I mean, like... Will he have no choice but to come then? Yeah, they say, it's weird. Like, he said... That he's claiming executive privilege. Executive and, privilege. Well, that's it's. Liz, Liz Cheney came out and said, "Yeah, because because Trump, Trump said that Steve Bannon can't testify because of executive privilege." 
and CPAP huh. is not a government employer or whatever. But then Liz Cheney comes out and says, well, like, I guess this clears up one thing. Steve Bannon and Donald Trump planned the January 6th insurrection. Yeah. Like, if you're claiming executive privilege over this, then I'm assuming you have material evidence or material information that you'd want to hide. So it's kind of a weird little thing. I don't know what will come of it, but... Um, I hope he has to talk. That'd be, I will watch that. Steve Bannon, all they have to do is get him on there and then play his Yeah, his podcast. Interview. Well, probably his podcast is one thing. No, there's like an interview that he did at CPAC in like 2017. And it was basically like his plan of like how he would destroy the government. Mm-hmm. And well, then that other, what was that guy? Ryan's penis? What was his name? <laughs> Ryan's, Ryan's penis? Oh, Ryan's Priebus, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. My apologies, the penis is everywhere. <laughs> Ryan's well, Pre- Priebus. Uh, they were on stage and they were being interviewed and I just remember like Steve Bannon's going on this bizarre rant about yeah. how they dismantled everything and I'm just like well sucks. theoretically Steve Bannon could just plead the fifth you know that's probably his best bet know. Steve Bannon's the worst because I don't even understand what this this guy is pure garbage because like what the first time I ever heard of him was when he made like a documentary for Sarah Palin, a oh, propaganda yeah. documentary. Oh yeah, he's been somebody who's like supposedly like can you like Seinfeld? Like he makes yeah. fun from that. He gets like, residuals. So he was part of some sort of investment firm that financed Seinfeld. So he gets uh, money. Why? I guess I'm a white nationalist now. Because <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, you know that episode where George takes the limo ride yeah. on and uh and it was supposed to be miller or whatever and seinfeld's the other guy and, and yeah, they're yeah. actually like in limo and it was nazis and they were going right. to math Square garden it was like a big protest um that's the episode where steve Bannon asked to have his yeah. name removed well bad <laughs> he was personally offended by that episode he was like um, well that i would love to see him in that i hope Honestly, this whole thing amounts to shit. This January sixth thing. If they don't get a guy like him in there, they yeah. need to. They have to. This thing won't amount to dog shit if they don't well, get. If they get him in, it's gonna be so fucking funny. I think they will. You know, I I really think they will. I think they're gonna get some blood out of this. And, and if he like, I want to say like, if he doesn't show up, he's like fucking arrested or something. Yeah. Well, they you know they threw Susan McDougal in prison for not testifying you're not coming in to, to testify um and that's that, based, that was for the whitewater investigation oh the, really? the clinton oh. yeah oh same situation it was a clinton ally uh susan mcdougall yeah and republicans, she went to jail. Always, republicans always seem to uh, are willing yeah. to do that democrats for some reason uh don't like wielding power or something well i'll bet you I don't know. I mean, I, I'm I'm waiting, seeing on this. Now, the, a fucking ass clown. Like, what, yeah. what are they protecting by fucking make him come in and make him fucking, you know, like you said, make him spill the take beans. The fifth, yeah. Or, or, or get in there and plead the fifth. Do, do what you need to do. Uh, but anyway, they, they the people on the, the Republicans on the, the House Committee, not the January 6th Committee, but the House Committee that that advanced the referral, they're going to have a vote in the complete uh, Congress, House, house uh, soon. Um, none of the Republicans spoke, but they asked that their time to speak be given to Matt Gates and Jim Jordan. And the Jim Matt Gates and Jim Jordan got up there and it was pretty funny. I mean, they got eviscerated by uh the, the people running the committee um yeah, the one guy said what this is in fox news or something he's like this, this this that may fly on steve bannon's podcast but it was not gonna fly here and like and then another woman when questioning jim jordan said this is about the whole country it's not a simple matter of not reporting rapes of children you were responsible for it's not about dating minors she's like basically she, throwing shade on uh on yeah. gates and so it was pretty funny i mean like i don't know i i 
I'm hopeful that this is going in the right direction. I mean, right. it's starting to pick up. I just wish it was like, all right, well, I guess I know she's on the list, but I guess we'll talk about her first since it, it leads to. Yeah, yeah. So Condoleezza Rice came out today and basically said, like, uh, we need to like move on from January 6th or yeah. something like that. Yeah. And I would just say, shut the fuck up, war criminal. Yeah. It's amazing that it's amazing that she would come out and say that you know what i mean like it's like I, I guess it's on brand for her but like even george bush although still a war criminal has handled his post-presidency amazingly well for all the colossal shit he did well he gets you know? to paint cats now or something yes he's, so he gets, he's threaded like, that needle he's like completely removed from any responsibility of his eight years it's like yeah. He's like, come on, you guys knew I wasn't running this show. Well, he would come out and he'd probably say the right thing. And that wouldn't negate or or mitigate anything he did, but he would he would like he wouldn't come out and say, like, we need to move on from January 6th. No, I don't think he would. <laughs> he wouldn't, you know. Um, and it's really I was really surprised at Condoleezza he would Rice. Say, said that. I like to eat poo. Well, George W. Bush. I'm surprised that Condoleezza Rice said that. I thought for what sure. What was it on? What, I only saw like her saying it. Was it was on The View. Ugh. Did the view? Did they rip her apart? Did uh, what's the yeah, voice? Yeah, someone. Did Harry say something. Someone like, said the like, "What are you talking about?" Well, don't you run the risk of that happening again? And Condoleezza Rice is like, "No, nah, but nah, nah, you know, like, yeah. it's just it's surprising because well, like she." Her shtick was always like, I was a dean at Stanford. I was this. I was, you know, like I went in. She's a Republican ideologue, and she knows in the end of the day that the more gen, the more we focus on January six, the more the Republican Party looks bad, yeah. and that's that's the reason why uh, Shaney, um, Liz Shaney, yeah, was completely like excised, or uh, she's like a fucking stained in the Republican Party is because she's part of this committee that's willing to go into it. Now, my theory was that like she could be ruining it in a way, but clearly maybe she isn't. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, Time will tell. Yeah. But I think as uh, Condoleezza Rice is a Republican ideologue, it's in her best, it's in her, what she considers her best interest yeah. to, take, to downplay and trivialize January 6th and to just say, like, hey, guys, come on. You know, we got to move on. You know, this is, we're not going to be able to unite unless we move on. It, it's total dog shit because yeah. January 6th is the reason why we're not united. Yeah. <laughs> and, the, and the fact that nothing has been really, really done except for some clowns yeah. getting arrested. Uh, like, a good example was uh, there was this clip going around, Charlie Kirk, Kirk uh, who, yeah. company, whatever, TTP or TTP. Uh, turning he funded yeah. buses and stuff to go out there and he was being interviewed by some guy uh or he invited some guy on a show i don't know his name you can find the clip it was a great clip going around with a guy who shows charlie kirk a uh a fetus and he says uh what is this human do we have tails and charlie kirk's like no and he's like well he shows the pictures of two fetus and and he tells them, well, this one's a dolphin, actually. So <laughs> shut the fuck up, Charlie. You know, like, <laughs> you know, like they're, they're both, you can't tell the difference at that point. The right. point is like, but the other, the thing that didn't get around as much, it's starting to get around, was he called out Charlie Kirk for not facing any, like basically yeah. calling him out for January 6th. And I'm like, this is, this needs to be done. Like this any of these motherfuckers that participated in any yep, way they'd be called in more in like the power not the people not the idiot the viking idiot or the dumbass carrying sure. with the slip that were the tie twist or the asshole's foot was on nancy police desk i'm talking about the motherfuckers who funded these people to get there yeah. who were responsible for weaponized them yeah those are the people that we need. And that's why it's important that we get Steve Batten on there. It's important that we get that. Conway Rice doesn't want to get to that point. No. So that's why she wants to downplay. She's looked at, she's kind of looked about now, like it's just kind of like uh, the smart, educated woman who we didn't agree with, but we could all say in the end of the day, we're, we're Americans. Yeah. She tries to pull out that bullshit. She's a fucking war criminal. She's unrepentant war criminal. Yep. And uh, she's a snake. 
And, yeah. you know, like, I remember when she was on, like, 30 Rock, they did this, like, thing, and the joke yeah. was she was dating Alf Baldwin. It was, like, cute, but it was, like, what the fuck, man? Right. This was, like, not too long after this presidency. The, the Bush administration was a fucking nightmare. Horrible. I don't think people remember how bad it was. And shit like 30 Rock, it was, like, dude, Connery's rights doesn't deserve to be on 30 Rock. Connery's rights deserves to be in a jail cell. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean... I'm not shocked by it at all. I, I mean, like, I don't think any anyone who's like, how could she say that? I'm like, it's true to form. Yeah, it's on brand. It's on brand. It is not in the best interest of the Republican Party to focus on. She may not sound as abhorrent or disgusting as Jim Jordan, Matt Gates. They're pit bulls. That's why all the Republicans voted because yeah, those two have no problem looking like ass clowns. Right. <laughs> That's Republican also on brand. Yeah, they they can get away with it too because Matt Gates will probably get reelected because the people in that part of Florida got the yeah. brain of me, but it did the brain of me, but just took over their body. It didn't kill them, <laughs> right? And that's why they vote for Matt Gates. And I guess Jim Jordan's in a safe district in Ohio. Is that where he's from? I think so. Yeah, he's Ohio. Yeah. Um, so they have nothing. Of course, they can get it there. But like the more like blue state Democrats, I'm like, eh, can we just get like. I'm just gonna let Jim Jordan do all the talking. Not me. I'm one of the good ones. Yeah, I'm one of the good ones. They well, serve their they serve their purpose well. I think you know a, an interesting contrast to Condoleezza Rice is the next person on our list is Colin Powell, who just died of uh, COVID complications. I guess he had cancer. He had a, he had a lot of stuff. He had going a bunch on. of things wrong with him. He was 84. Yeah, and, and he was 84. That, so that got weaponized and it was used as like a way to downplay and attack uh, yeah. vaccines. Of course, I mean. These the people the anti vaxxers don't have much. They they can they'll take what they can get. They can get whatever they get. Uh, I I mean I have mixed feelings on Colin Powell. He wasn't a good person. I mean I think the one thing he did that like people think like liberals love him or something is just because like he endorsed Obama in a way and um whatever that's cool. Uh, (laughs) But that doesn't make up for the fact that he like went out of the UN and lied to everybody holding a fake vial of like yeah talcum powder and said it was weaponized yellow cake or something i don't know i i tend to think he was he was more of a villain than not um i do get the idea too that he may have been told a bunch of shit and he just accepted it as true i don't know i do know that he as much as anyone could he worked to kind of mitigate his errors you know he, he admitted some of his errors he well he said like good things that, like one of the things he said when uh, obama was running in 08 was uh especially with the mccain campaign because there was a lot of racism involved yep. especially attacking muslim people was uh he brought up a fact that like you know there's people in the military that not just that died in battle that uh didn't have a cross and didn't have a yeah. uh, Jewish star, but it had the uh, moon and crescent. I, yeah. I, no, the crescent is, I don't know the symbol. The, the crescent, name. yeah. Yeah. And he was pointing out, he was pointing that out and saying like to attack Muslim people and everything, so people who served in the military and everything like that. Good on him. Good on him for- Yeah, for he was a complicated guy. I'll put it that way. I will say the one thing though about him though, is I know that he was interested in, there was talks of him running for president in like 96 yeah they were floating his name around especially with like his kind of becoming famous after the first iraq war and uh you know he was gonna be like the new the new kind of republican you yes know? like and he'd be the first african-american and he would be like uh there's a lot of like th- then that got destroyed and his yeah. integrity was destroyed with the whole iraq war um He's famous for what is he famous for that one? He, there was like a is he the one who came up with the fucking pottery barn line or something? I think he's the one who said something. Oh yeah, I think I don't remember that particularly, but yeah. yes. Yeah. I don't know. I I'm not, I mean, I didn't really say anything when he died. I mean, the only thing I said was just that like uh people are gonna use his death to yeah. downplay COVID. Well speaking and yeah, oh, speaking of COVID deniers and liars, Dennis Prager got COVID. Yes. He literally got it because and he said he was gonna hug people. Yeah. Uh and uh I'm sure he'll be fine. He's 
I said that I tweeted, I said he should only be allowed to take horse paste <laughs> and uh, home brewed, uh, uh, what's it, chloroquine? Yeah, uh, chloroquine. Only the made out of grapefruits. Home. Made out of, yeah, the delicious summer shandy that, that <laughs> not that clan member in Texas uh, was pushing. The, yeah. The put the recipe out for. I think oh. you should only receive treatment from doctors trained at Prager U. Right, you know? yeah, <laughs> yeah, the pe- best Prager U scientist. I love yes. Prager U because there is no actual college. No, it's just like a YouTube but, channel. <laughs> but people cite it. Oh, yeah. They do, and that's fucked up. I don't really have anything else to say about it. I'm sure I'll be fine. He's a very rich yes. man, and he'll be given the best treatment. Yep. And he's a lying piece of shit. Yeah, he doesn't. Piece- he can just stay at home and get good private medical care and he'll be fine yeah he's a liar he's a liar it's like the same thing with joe rogan getting it joe yep. rogan's super rich it's access to the best doctors yeah and he doesn't have to go to work he doesn't have to worry about bills he's yeah well i guess this kind of like this this is an interesting one we've talked about this a few times it's our last topic of the the evening yep. and it this is um, <laughs> oh, this morning and it is the netflix uh dave Chappelle slash margaret atwood uh okay. stuff so dave Chappelle had a special a uh, comedy special and yep. it was uh just him uh basically making these claims of uh well he said he was a turf he defended jk rowling yep. he defended uh, but the thing that he did that i didn't really get into too much was, well one he he tried to make it sound like he said the lgbtq are uh why why is their cause so quickly taken care of but not black people or whatever i don't know he's trying to create this sure. bizarre narrative and i would say well i mean like you know there's more information out there media moves quicker these days yep. words move like of course things would happen quicker in those ways because yeah we live in a different world information changes quickly and also the progress made of other people will lead to the progress hopefully of other people it's kind yeah. of how it works it didn't start you know like the uh civil rights movement and all that stuff gay people were part of that they just didn't yep. get to really fully benefit in any way until decades later yeah it's not like their their causes or what they're like that they just came out of nowhere right like as if like they woke up one day and went oh wait where how come i can't get married oh wait why can't i do this like no it was always there it's just yeah it was, and he was trying to like downplay it and again he used this bizarre like he tried to make it almost sound like there was it's all white people and that's the reason why it's moving up I'm like wait so there's no there's no lgbtq people of color yeah like, it's you just erased every black like trans person uh, like and it, it's a known fact that the most marginalized people in this, some of the most marginalized people in this country are not just the trans people but black trans women yeah for sure like, like even in dallas alone like i don't know it was like two years ago something like that it was like oh, five yeah. that murdered one in one summer and it was in dallas it was like one of these weird like it's the it's the the trans uh, rights movement is it's a really interesting one in that every time I get the feeling that it's gained really wide stream, mainstream acceptance, um, there seems to be like a significant group of people that are against it. You know, and it's not always the people you, su- you would suspect, like Margaret Atwood or Jake. I don't know why you assume J.K. Rowling would be a liberal, but like. Oh, she's well, literate. She's, she's always a... been kind of progressive in some way. Yeah. Or she claimed to be. And one of the funny things that she would always do, which was like pathetic, because like all her movies and shit were filled with like white people and stuff. Yeah. Like the joke was that like um so she would like come in and say something like, Well, Dumbledore's gay. And right. it was over. And it was like, okay. Yeah. And <laughs> sure, the... why not? Dumbledore is gay. It wasn't really part of the story, but whatever makes you feel whatever you think it will take to keep your books more relevant and your movies. But she went on this bizarre, like over the years, this became a turf where she like, and she tries to use like that these men are trying to take away 
the a lived experience women or something yeah it is weird i and we we talked about this a little bit and i'm, I'm gonna say it like as carefully as i can because it's, it's a weird thing to articulate for me and, and i don't believe this perspective uh, to be clear i don't believe <laughs> make, make, i want to make this clear yeah <laughs> Do not isolate um, this clip. Right. <laughs> I'm going to watermark it by saying I don't believe this throughout constantly, my life. Constantly, every other word. <laughs> but so, someone said, and I saw this on Twitter, and it was like a reasonably articulate post. They said, um, try to think of this. This is a turf. But not talking. reasonable. Uh, well, they, they reasonable. sounded reasonable, you know, which right. you can sound reasonable saying all sorts of horrible shit. And exactly. she, she said basically, like, think of this in terms of a person of color who gets um, uh, angry at cultural appropriation, like when a white person wears dreadlocks or when a white person tries to pass him or herself off as a person of color, that's, that's why we're mad. And I don't agree with that, as I've said, um, but I get that, I, that perspective clicked and I was like, oh, okay, I'm beginning to see your mistaken belief here. Like, cause previously I didn't understand it at all. I had no <laughs> idea what they were talking okay. about. What's fucked up is, is that they're using the aggrievements of people who were marginalized over the years to attack marginalized people. Yeah. That's fucked up. That's what Dave Chappelle did in his special. He uses the struggle, past, modern, whatever going on now, struggle yeah. of one group, to attack another group and yeah. that's not good well what you had said earlier too is is the ultimate truth like a rising tide lifts all boats if a trans community makes advances in their civil rights that also helps all other groups in their quest for civil rights a good it example really, yeah so there does. was a walkout today at netflix so supposedly uh netflix uh fired supposedly fired a couple of trans people who spoke out i don't know yeah. the full details but they like either interrupted a meeting or something or something happened and they were fired from their job so it's funny because dave Chappelle in his special where he was paid millions and millions and millions of dollars for it went on a rant and saying that he was canceled these people were literally canceled because yeah, they tried to speak out so dave Chappelle tries to craft yeah i'll just read this is my tweet said the most effed up part about Chappelle's comedy special is that he tries to craft a secret shadowy LGBT cabal or a they that decides the fate of good honest rich entertainers. He uses similar replacement theory rhetoric that neo-Nazis use when they talk about Jewish people. Yeah. It's the same shit. He was trying to make it sound like this is like, like Kevin Hart was canceled over oh, because uh, stuff surfaced and the Oscars didn't want the host. Kevin Hart's doing fine. Man's fucking rich as fuck. He's in yeah. tons of things. He's beloved. No one gives a shit. Oh no, he didn't get to host the Oscars. Oh, poor baby. He'll survive. You know, no one gives a shit about the Oscars anyway. But yeah. the thing is, like, it's like, oh wow, oh man, the struggle is real, Dave. And then he's talking about J.K. Rowling, who's a fucking billionaire. Yeah. I mean, it's like he's he's talking about his class. He's not talking about like, these are not people that we or anyone, most people will ever understand these people's lives and these yeah. people have a massive platform so when they say something stupid it's like a megaphone it's like blasted into the air everyone hears it it may it get, you don't you may not even know who they are but you'll know who they are by the end of the day because they're they permeate society yeah in every way like okay the margaret atwood thing is really disappointing because yeah. it's like I mean, the only what my only defense is like what she's an old white lady, yeah, and she's out of touch. Yep. Well, I think what that's did she it. say? Where she said something. What she she say? said um, that like you can't. And she's the author of The Handmaid's Tale. Yes. Yeah, and that was um, that which is obviously a, um, a obviously a big deal. All right, she said, Handmaid's author uh, Atwood sparks controversy. Um, she said, why can't we say woman anymore? The article headline reads, um, and that serves as the text of her tweet. Woman is in danger of becoming a dirty word, struck from the lexicon of officialdom, eradicated from medieval medical vocabulary, and expunged from conversation. Uh, duh, 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 duh. 
it's a it's a long article. I don't want to cherry pick it and put That's it. But, fine. but the 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 gist was that she kind of came out as like a turf or at least having turf sympathies. Um, She's typically telling in the turf world, and then yeah. depending on what happens and. Well, so I it'd be full on turf, or it'll just go away, and people forget next week. And not I guess I I I don't struggle with it, but I think about that sometimes, like about um, people being non-binary, you know, which I totally get, and that that makes good sense to me that someone will look at like gender and sex and the way well, there's, there's societal norms, and there's so there's gender, right. And then there's just shit that's like depicted in society. Like, I don't know, like a hundred years ago, men wore pink. Right. Like they wore pink. Like it was like businessmen, everything. Like suits were pink. Yeah. It wasn't. And then it became, no, little girls were pink and boys were blue. And it was like, these are just, that's social constructs. Yeah, they're just little blip, blips. So, I mean, I get like, like if, if, my identity and th- th- this is another thing that's difficult for me is I've, I've never really been like of a in a truly marginalized group i've been like a middle class white guy my whole life and that's just like i and that's a real blind spot for me is to see these other perspectives so i get like if i'm a if i'm a woman and i feel like there's a war on women today which there seems to be i get how like i don't want that thing about me being erased you know and i think the mistake is that like some of these people seem to think that people are trying to erase them and their experience but i don't think that's what's going on you know what i mean like it's like a trans woman or trans man is like it's their experience not yeah. yours and they're not trying to take away your experience now they try to like i always hear like turf talks and stuff like that they try to explain they try to make it sound like the trans people lgp whatever are trying to take away the fact that you like you can't say a woman or a man anymore oh yeah i mean it, it's nonsense and it's ridiculous uh no one's like okay so i tweeted i said the handmaid's tale is a dystopian fascist future where right-wing chuds have their way with women in society the irony of the author being defended by the same chuds that would make her book true because she said something dumb about trans people is making my brain explode. Yeah, I mean, that's... Now, that's, like, I woke up or whatever, I look at Twitter and I saw, like, Paul Joseph Watson, Ben Shapiro, all these, like, horrible yeah. writers who would gladly remove a woman's right to choose at, at, a, at any chance they can get, marginal, you know put women back in the kitchen, all that stuff. And they're the ones coming out defending Margaret Atwood. And now someone like asshole like Bill Maher would be like, well, don't you see that as a problem? And I'd be like, no, that's a, that's a Margaret Atwood in theory should come out and be like, I think what I said is being misconstrued. I didn't mean to say that or whatever. And I, the last thing I want to do is be defended by people yeah. that I literally wrote a novel about. Like, you, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, it, it's, this seems fixable. Yeah, but it probably won't. It, it won't. I mean, listen, she's an old rich white lady. I mean, yeah. at the end of the day, like, I've heard criticism about A Handmaid's Tale, like how it's like, I don't know. I, I don't know. it. I can't speak for it enough. It's something to do with like white women and like racing. Well, like, I did see, like, I did see that. Yeah, it basically took one of the big complaints I've heard recently is that it took the slavery narrative and gave it over to white women, you know, and that's, and, that's... And another good, sh- uh, like on the show, Handmaid's Tale, which was a great show, yeah. but you know, it reeks of uh, her, June's her name. Yeah. A great white savior. It has, it is like literally yeah. that in a way when you watch, if you watch the show, I mean, it's still really good, but that that element is fucking, it reeks of that. Um, yeah, I mean, I get it's just like to go back to like the Netflix thing though. So there was like a big walkout in Netflix to yeah. this They like then like Netflix is like LGBT like account on Netflix basically said walking out like and people were like, "What?" They're like, "Yeah, we are." Like yeah. they didn't give a shit. The people running that account, like, what are you gonna do? Get fire us? The fucking CEO at first defended Chappelle. Now he's trying to walk it back. Yeah. And again, it's like 
I, I, I want to wrap this podcast that's running late, but like, there, I've heard this again. It, it, there's like parables to like the way anti trans people talk about LGBTQ people as this like powerful group that can destroy you. Sounds exactly the way I would hear about like Nazis would talk about Jews yeah. as really run the world. And it's complete fucking nonsense. Yeah. And, and no, it's, 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 disgust- it's like they're trying to create this victim complex or something. Um, you know, in the end of like Chappelle's comedy skit, he said, I'm done saying stuff about the trans people because they can't handle his jokes. Sure. And I'm like, okay, who the fuck are you? Yeah. Like, oh no, please don't make jokes. Like, oh no, what will they do? What will they, how will they go out their day without getting <laughs> Chappelle? <laughs> Chappelle <laughs> you know, jokes. Fun of... Like, dude, how about you just come out and say, I'm old and stale? Yeah. That's it. You're old and stale, dude. You're old and stale. You're done. You have not, you know what? Come back and t- maybe come back in a decade. Maybe it'll be funny again. I don't know. Or maybe it'll be worse. Probably be worse. Um, I want to bring up one other thing for you yeah. because I was thinking about, and we talked about this before. Another good example, and I hear this like being pushed by people, uh, the way they attack trans people too is like, I remember like when the bathroom bill went into effect yep. or tried to go into effect in North Carolina by that asshole. Yeah, uh, Republican guy. Bill Maher, I remember, was talking and he was saying something about like, this is how Democrats lose because we side with this or we like fall for this culture war thing. And I'm like, wait, the, the Democrats were not the ones that wrote the bathroom bill. Yeah. The Republicans wrote it. Like, they're not going to lose. Wait, so what are you saying? Like, to have progressive. That makes no sense. To have progressive change, we have to like ignore marginalized people. No, no. It's all built in. Yeah. You can't tell me you're for Medicare for all and then against the well-being of people. Yeah. It's it's rising tide lifts all boats in the harbor. But right. you got you got to root for all the other people in it with you. So, yeah. Uh, exactly. Well, you know what? <laughs> that ends up on a good note. I think yeah. you know, it was uh this we we weren't we were gone a week and I think you know came in came in strong, right? I like it. This is the this is the best podcast ever. <laughs> there's no other there's no other podcast out there. it is, is. yeah it, it, as far as i know i don't know I, <laughs> I don't know what a podcast is. all right well on that note i'm rob israel i'm joseph k you still going on about that